broke the joint Honey, I'm drinking all your liquor Don't understand all the confusion Smoke myself in your illusions But when our body's such it's fusion Now all you do is bang Now all you do is bang, bang, bang Now all you do is bang my Bang my heart against your Listen to this. 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 Full this. color. Full this. color. Full this. color. Full La color. Fuente. La Fuente. La Fuente presents. Full color by La Fuente. The night is over 
please don't worry about me I'm about to let my heart speak My friends keep telling me to leave this So let's get down, let's get down to business Let's get down Let's get down Let's get down Let's get down, let's get down, let's get down, let's get down Let's get down, let's get down to business Give you one more night, one more night, got this We've had a million, million nights just like this So let's get down, let's get down to business Walk back and forth with the bullshit I know I said it before, I don't mean it It's been a while since I had your attention So in my heart to hit it More than this Do you still recall my name And the month it all began Will you release me with a kiss I never took that bill Against my will There was a void I had to fill You will forward understand That there's nothing in this world That's coming first The only road I know is cold But I keep walking straight ahead My delight. Oh, you're such a pretty one, and the naked thrills of flesh and skin tease me through the night. Well, I hate to leave you back. If you need me, I'll be there. Don't you ever let me down. Days like careless words, cozy in my mind. I never took. Will there was a void I had to fill You if I would understand That there's nothing in this world that's 
mamma da bocca picchi da va bene si tu la parla mi è americano quando si fa l'amore sotto la luna Papa l'America Hey, hey, hey. 
He's on the move, can't seem to shake the shade. Within his dreams, he sees the life he made. Made. The pain is deep. A silent sleeper, you won't hear a beep, beep. The girl he wants don't see no one in two. It seems the feelings that she had her through. A big hello to all the viewers around the world watching the special flagship event uh, ANOC WBG with the World Beach Games Europe Qualification 2023. Welcome to this live stream. We are super excited to have all of you. Thank you for joining in from wherever you are in the world. I hope you have a fantastic day out of you or having one and you do enjoy all the games lined up for the day. The first match that's happening on the court right now is between Netherlands and Germany and we are in middle of the first match of the team relay event. The Netherlands is being represented by Russell Munz, uh, Wessel van der Aar, Chloe Meyer, and Germany is being represented by Felix Hamas, Jonas Keller, and Fabiana Dupre. As it stands, Netherlands is leading by 14 to 13, and uh, for 
air badminton is a pretty new sport, but for those who you know, uh, the first match goes on till 16 points, and then we move on to the next match. There are going to be five matches played in all, two triple events, one women doubles, one men's doubles, and one mixed doubles. The, f the first match is really heating up. Germany with 14, Netherlands with 13. Who's going to get to the point of 16 first? Let's see. When you hit us in the club, you're gonna turn the shit up. You're gonna turn the shit up. You're gonna turn the shit up. When we up in the club, all eyes on us. All eyes on us. All eyes on us. See the boys in the club, they watching us. They watching us. They watching us. Everybody in the club, all eyes on us. All eyes on us. All eyes on us. I wanna scream and shout and let it all out. And scream and shout and let it out. We say you know. the action rock and roll everybody let's lose control all the bottom we let it go going fast we ain't going slow no no hey yo hear the beat now let's hit the flow drink it up and then drink some more light it up and let's let it blow 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 hey yo rock it out rocking out if you know what we talking about burn it up and burn down the house hey, 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 yo. turn it up and don't turn it down here we go we gonna shake the ground because everywhere that we go we bring the all right. Welcome to the second match, uh, lined up for Netherlands versus Germany. Uh, that's one of the semi-finals, and other semi-finals being Denmark versus France. Uh, Germany is uh, seated second in this whole team relay event, and they are competing for a berth in finals uh, which will be played uh, around 11.30 today. The second match will be played between uh, Imke van der Aar and Iris van Leise from Netherlands against Annalena Dix and Alicia Molitor from Germany. I would again like to welcome all the viewers and listeners from around the world who have tuned into this exciting event. It does look uh, very different from the normal badminton and the rules that we follow typically in the badminton world. But it's a fantastic sport that uh, BWF has introduced to ensure that it, the sport is more accessible. Everybody can play regardless of 
a, a, an indoor court being available and just hit the beach and have a great time outdoors. We would like to thank our main sponsor, Sinner, uh, uh, support of whom has been crucial in making this event uh, a reality and I'm sure a success by end of this weekend. It's an electric environment today uh, in, a, in, a, in a very nice place called Werkendam. Uh, it's in the province of Nord Brabant in the Netherlands. Uh, beautiful sunny day, uh, excellent beach club uh, in which this event is being hosted. And indeed a wonderful start to the Dutch summer. All right, the Dutch ladies leading the charge here with 21-18. And the team relay event have got really interesting set of rules, uh, which keeps the sport extremely uh, vibrant and exciting throughout uh, the, the entire period that it's played. As for viewers who are new to air badminton, we would like to quickly have a recap of the rules. The first match which was already done and won by Netherlands. Uh, the first match was basically one game which was played until one of the team reaches 16 points and the, ch the change of end happens when the first team reaches 8 points and typically as we all know in badminton, normal badminton, uh, the change of end happens only in the third game at the, at the, at the tiebreaker or, or in the interval. Coming back to air badminton, the second match which is happening right now between uh, the two ladies from Netherlands and two ladies from Germany. It happens immediately after the end of first triple and we basically continue from that score. This match will go on till 32 points, whoever reaches those points first. However, change of ends will happen when the first team reaches 24. So now Netherlands is 23, Germany is 21 and whoever reaches 24 points first, that will be the time when they will switch the ends. And from that point onwards, the third match will start. I hope that small recap helped and we will try to take you through uh, the interesting and really exciting rules that are uh, established in this sport as we carry out the team relay event between Netherlands and Germany. I'm sure the players uh, are having a fantastic time. Um, uh, from different European countries. Uh, it's, a, it's a blissful day in the Netherlands with uh, uh, sun shining and uh, I'm sure people are looking forward to having a, a fantastic electric environment as well as a party setting here. A lot of cool music happening, um, good participation online. There are also audi audiences sitting in the, in the stands here uh, witnessing the sport. 
So let's start with the second phase of the second match here. Twenty four twenty two in favor of Netherlands, just out. It is serving. The shuttle just landed in the dead zone, which is uh, technically out and a point for the Dutch team here. Germany keeping a, a close difference here, ensuring that they are totally in the match. So for all the lovers and enthusiastic uh, people of badminton who have been playing badminton all their lives, uh, it might appear on the screen that this is a slow sport compared to the regular badminton that we play in the sport halls. However, uh, it's equally difficult to ensure that you're agile and moving freely uh, in a beach sport like air badminton. And the concept of dead zone, which spans for two meters from the, from the position of the net, on either of the sides is actually a fantastic idea because it helps players to not lunge too deep in the uh, in the in the court and thereby avoiding potential injuries as well. It is a new sport for everyone, including all the international players that you are seeing on your screen, and uh, I'm sure they are also trying to uh, evolve and adapt to these rules as well as trying to be smart on how to how to win the matches as well as score points effectively. Netherlands extend, extending their lead to five points now and three more points to go before this match ends and we start with the next match of the Team Relay event. Germany making a small comeback here by reducing the lead from 5 to 2. The German players are really pumped up. They want to give a good fight to Dutch ladies here. And Elena Dix and Alicia Molitor from Germany giving an excellent fight to Imke van der and Iris van Leyse. Brilliant placement by Imke van der doing a cross drop as we would call in traditional badminton and that working to their advantage. Uh, excellent point by Dutch ladies there.
All right, and Dutch prevail. While Germany did make a, a small comeback, uh, however, Dutch continue to extend their lead and end up winning the second match of women's doubles uh, in the team relay event. While we are witnessing Germany versus Netherlands in the second semifinals going on on the second beach court, that's uh, it's also Denmark versus France taking place, which is not being telecasted right now. Uh, however, we will now continue with the third match, uh, the triple event. Uh, Netherlands is being represented by Heistech, uh, Gail Mahulete, and Iris van Leise again. So Iris would be playing her second con second match immediately. And against the German triple team from of Fabian de Bray, Lennart Gunder, and Alicia Molitor. Let's see how that works out. The first triple event was surely exciting. And let's witness how the second one goes on now. Uh, Netherlands with a with a uh, with a small lead over here, uh, clearly making making sure that they are ahead of the race at all the times. But Germany is not way behind, so you never know how the next 16, 20 points are going to turn out. Well, we are about to get started with the third match of the team relay event between Netherlands and Germany. Uh, again, repeating the teams. Netherlands is being represented by Gijs Thuis, Gil Mahulete, and Iris van Leise. And Germany is being represented by Fabian Dupre, Lennart Konder, and Alicia Molitor. Gijs to serve. Again, we are seeing the same trend. Uh, Germany keeping uh, uh, a manageable difference here. Uh, the, the rules of uh, air badminton are very interesting. Uh, it does make sure that uh, we encourage a good rally happening between the two teams uh, by, by creating a dead zone between the net and the server or receiver. So basically that takes out those delicate drops and uh, the, the tumbling net drop shots out of the equation by ensuring that 
players are more reliant on their drives and uh, clears, etc. This third match will be played until one of the team reaches 48 points and the change of ends will happen when the first team reaches 40 points. Netherlands seems surely the favourite to reach that point first, having the lead of 4 points over Germany. Now 5. I think Dutch players are really playing smartly. They have been um, known to play this sport for a while and surely their experience is counting right over here. It is to serve. Just out from the sidelines. 38 to 34 in favor of Netherlands. So a healthy lead now of six points for Netherlands, 14-34. Uh, surely now the favorites to win this team relay event. Uh, however, now is a change of ends where uh, they change the ends from which they are playing to ensure that the, the game remains fair on both the teams. Uh, as we all can imagine, the wind speed plays a pretty important role in the in the trajectory and the behavior of the air badminton shuttle air badminton shuttle is known to be heavier it has a harder uh, cork uh, which which makes it uh, more durable of course but also it helps it travel farther a service fault from Germans. Kais tries to serve again. Excellent serve. Uh, good lift by Iris by just going out. Thirty to forty two, Germany closing in. It has never been a game which only one team has dominated so far over the three matches that we have played till now. Good judgment by Iris van Lysse on the left-hand side of the court. Gail Mahu later to serve. Excellent kill by Heiss.
All right, Dutch need four more points, reach 48, and then uh, win this match as well. Beautiful drop by Iris. Stretches her lead to 46. Two more points to go for winning this match for Dutch. Excellent placement by Kais. That makes Dutch the winner of the second triple event uh, against Germany and a healthy lead of eight points between Netherlands and Germany. The Dutch are clearly dominating over here. And uh, they surely look like more uh, coordinated in terms of uh, their positioning, ensuring that uh, they are anticipating better from where the Germans are going to head back. And that takes us to the fourth game at our match, yeah, which uh, is, is the men's doubles Netherlands event. Uh, and Netherlands is being represented by Heistels and Wisselfund R. And Germany is being represented by Felix Hamas and Johannes Pistorius. And for Germany, Felix Hams and Johannes Pistorius. Wessel van der Aar, brother of Imke van der Aar. The beautiful aspect of the air badminton is it happens to be very, very accessible for all the masses around the world. Uh, the masses are not reliant or kids, every player or in, every lover of badminton is not dependent on a sport hall all the time. Often we see that sport halls are fully booked or people don't get their fair amount of time to play and have a great time with their friends. But a concept as innovative and as refreshing as air badminton lets you just enjoy the sport anywhere as far as you get uh, yeah, a, a good net for yourself and a, a nice measure of the place that you're playing in. Beach sounds to be a perfect idea, especially when summer is approaching European countries. Uh, Asian countries shouldn't really have a problem with uh, finding the right time of the year to play the sport. However, it does sound an extremely innovative concept and make sure that People are sportive, they are maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and resource constraints like unavailability of halls should not be a problem anymore for pursuing their sport of choice, that is badminton.
ゲルオリワンAll right, so this match, the fourth match of the Team Relay event, will go on till point number 64. Whoever reaches that, that position first, and the change of ends will happen when the score reaches 56 points, just to keep it fair between the two teams. Uh, as we see now, Netherlands is leading by a comfortable lead of 10 points, 54 to 44 against Germany. Um, however, it's an unpredictable sport, as we all know. It uh, You never want to take your eyes off uh, the rallies going on, so who knows, we might be in for a twist here. All the four men trying to keep a neutral game by clearing and waiting for the opponents to make a mistake. Netherlands continues to extend their lead and now it's change of ends for the second triple match. Sorry, the second, the fourth match of the team relay event, uh, the men's doubles. Extra 
excellent attack by Germans here. 56, 45. Excellent attack by Heiss. And 57 to 45, wow, that looks a uh, pretty decent lead um, for the fourth match of the Stream Relay event. I hope all of you on online watching the stream on YouTube are having a great time watching this event. Also learning about the rules of this new game, a very innovative one indeed. And uh, hopefully you're all looking forward to hitting that beach, which is probably closest to you or ensuring that you find a place near to where you live, where you can also enjoy this beautiful outdoor sport called Air Badminton. Right, four more points for the fourth match to end. Uh, Dutch look clearly on the course to win this match as well with a healthy lead. Um, and after the men's doubles, we will get started with the final team relay event bit of the semi-finals between Netherlands and Germany, which would be a mixed doubles. 6 to 48. It's been a fantastic environment created over here uh, by Badminton Netherland, the Air Badminton team of Badminton Netherland to ensure that this event becomes a success. They have been blessed with fantastic weather uh, today in the Netherlands in a town called Werkendam. Uh, a fantastic beach club uh, in which this event has been organized. Uh, we would like to thank our special sponsor, Sinner, Victor, uh, for supporting this event. Um, and uh, please do check out their service offerings and the cool products that they have on offer as well. We have got uh, a really nice uh, group of uh, audio music fellas here who are keeping this uh, environment vibrant with awesome music, some cool announcements, uh, keeping uh, keeping an ex extremely exciting environment for all of us to experience. Excellent splash by Whistle. Two more points to go for winning the fourth match. Wow, that's been one dominant performance by Netherlands so far. And as you can see on the holdings, Air Badminton, always and everywhere. Yep, exactly. That slogan is so true. Uh, everybody has access to the sport, uh, regardless of the availability of a sport hall or a court, uh, an indoor court. And that's the beauty of the sport that you can enjoy. Uh, without being worried too much about not having the right place to play the traditional badminton.
Durban's not giving up so easily. Fantastic to see. Keeping a uh, aggressive game. And Dutch prevail again. 64 to 53, uh, which means that Dutch have also won the fourth match of the team relay event. The same finals happening in Workendam. 10th of June and we're gonna have the finals tomorrow of course uh, I'm sure the Dutch players are super pumped up with their performance so far and also looking to wrap up and probably have a, uh, a whitewash of this whole team really event by winning all the five matches the last match is gonna be played between uh, Russell Munz and Imke van der Aar from Netherlands against Jonas Keller and Annalena Dix I would like to welcome again all the viewers around the world who have joined the BWF channel, uh, witnessing this innovative sport in reality, uh, and also probably getting interested to try it out themselves. My name is Rohit Kulkarni, speaking out of Work and Dam, where this event is being hosted. Uh, it has been a fantastic party-like atmosphere. Uh, a lot of European teams and players who have been representing their countries at at a pretty top level within their countries, outside of their countries, uh, they are here to represent and play for air badminton sport. It does have new set of rules, which I would urge everyone to look at, and it does keep the team, the game very interesting. We can all imagine that playing badminton, especially for kids on a beach-like setting like the one that you're seeing on your screens, uh, could be so uh, good for their conditioning as well. Uh, we have been, of course, traditionally depending on sport halls and coaches to teach the young or the next generation to pick up the badminton as a sport. However, just playing it on a, a absolutely open space like a beach also helps them keep their condition quite good as well as enjoy this beautiful sport. Good serve by Imke. That stretches the lead to 65 to 53 for Netherlands. The respective teams of Germany and Netherlands cheering their fellow friends and players in action right now. On the sidelines. This is the fifth and the final match of the team relay event, the semi-finals happening between Netherlands and Germany. This match will be played till the first team which reaches 80 points and thereby wins this match. Uh, it's quite uh, it's quite obvious that Netherlands is uh, in a dominant position over here. When either of the teams reach 72 points, that's when they change the ends and changing the ends ensures that both the team get a fair chance to uh, adapt to the weather conditions, especially the wind speed can play a crucial role in how the shuttle behaves. 
So a change of ends is absolutely a fair rule which helps teams to uh, adapt and ensure that they both get the advantages of uh, wind working in their favor or not. One more point to go for Rather, two more points to go till 72 uh, for the change of ends to happen. Dutch are, as expected, uh, first to reach the point of 72, which which means that the teams will now change the ends. Uh, Russell and Imke are keeping uh, a, a very smart game on with ensuring that they're keeping a neutral game in play, making sure that rallies are happening and then waiting for the mistakes to be committed by the German team. And that strategy is working quite well in their favor. Uh, it does appear on the screen that uh, uh, a beach sport like air badminton is probably less agile compared to what we typically see in a traditional badminton match. However, we can also imagine that uh, doing your footwork and ensuring that you are moving swiftly on sand is uh, visibly more difficult for the players and it also means that they cannot rely on the traditional drop shots uh, because there is a dead zone which is defined from net to 2 meters on either of the sides of the court. So they have to ensure that it's uh, it's in the area after the dead zone that sir, the serve and the returns have to land to, uh, to ensure that they win the points and uh, accordingly also coordinate with their partners. I think uh, Jonas lost the shuttle over there. Uh, it can be sometimes blinding. Uh, even even though you are wearing shades and goggles to see the shuttle, it can be a bit uh, difficult to witness the, the shuttle coming at you, which is uh, exactly what happened there, even though he was in a pretty good position to return the shuttle. A bit of a funny moment. <laughs> A more than healthy lead for Dutch here, 16 points.
excellent deception by Imker. Doing a cross drop. like to welcome all the viewers again all around the world we are seeing steady increase in the number of viewers on YouTube thank you for joining in I hope you are learning about this innovative sport as well as having a good time watching Dutch and Germans compete for the birth in finals of the European qualification zone 23 well yes, and that concludes the fifth and the final match between Germany and Netherlands uh, Netherlands a clear winner, uh, winning all the five matches of the team relay event and uh, finally reaching a score of 80 to 62. A fantastic performance by the Dutch team. Make some noise for Team Germany and Team Netherlands. The tie is won by the Netherlands, 80 62. The tie is won by uh, Netherlands over here. Excellent performance by the team. The Dutch team, the team cheering for each other. We are probably gonna ha we are probably gonna see if we can get hold of some Dutch and German players later in the day uh, to interview them to check on their experience of playing this innovative sport and what sort of advantages or differences they will see uh, yeah, with the traditional badminton that they play so often or have been playing for almost the whole of their lives. So looking forward to listening to some of the players who have been the most exponents to this innovative sport, air badminton, and learning from the experiences for all of us to ages can enjoy this. As you can see there have been some air badminton nets being fixed in some of the public areas uh, I just saw on the map a uh, moment ago uh, which helps school going kids, adults.
Hello everyone, this is Rohit Kulkarni again, speaking from Werkendam in the Netherlands. And in a few minutes from now, we are going to play the finals of the European Qualifications Team, team Relay event.
All right, we would like to ask uh, the teams, the France, Netherlands, Germany and Denmark to come to the assembly point. We're going to start in a few minutes, so we would like to ask the teams, France, Netherlands, Gen Germany and Denmark to come to the assembly point, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rohit Kulkarni reporting from Work and Dam in Netherlands. Uh, we are all awaiting for the uh, for the next match, the team relay event between France and the Netherlands, being played on Court One of the Beach Sports Club here in Work and Dam. Let me quickly go through the roster that France and Netherlands uh, have pitched against each other. France is being represented by Quarantine Lesserf, Lorraine Beaumont, Thomas Vallee, Ophelia Cassier. Charlotte Ganshi. Since 1996, and Netherlands is being represented by Russell Munch, Imke van der Aar, Russell van der Aar, Roy Meyer, Heistes, and Gail Mahulete. And of course, as well as Chris van Leijs. We will soon begin a few minutes uh, of the board that you're seeing on your screens uh, with these teams lining up and getting ready for that first it's match. The first match, match is going to be the mixed doubles event between. Quarantine Lesser, Lorraine Bauman from France versus Russell Sons and Imke van der from Netherlands. We will try to repeat and recap the rules of a team relay event. Uh, we are perfectly aware that uh, it's a new sport for the whole world, Air Badminton. It's an extremely innovative sport, accessible for everyone. Uh, so it's important that everyone gets to know what are the rules and regulations that we are playing with throughout a team relay event and uh, uh, we are able to keep up with the, the, with the progression of the match. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned and excitement lay, lays ahead. We have uh, Team Belgium uh, watching over here. Spreek jullie Nederlands allemaal? I don't speak French. When do you have to play today? When do you have to play? We don't know yet. You don't know yet? Oh, then we don't know. You have the cards and the dice uh, here with you and then, uh, the ne Netherlands worst salami plakjes. You like it? How are your chances today? How are your chances? Do you think you're going to win? Good try, okay. Good luck today. The best spot over here, eh? En mensen van de weer hebben we, Kijk, al die mensen zitten onder de parasol daar. Gaat het goed aan deze kant? Jullie zaten net daar, je dacht vanaf hier dat is uh, VIP plaatsen. Voor wie zijn jullie gekomen? Ja? Ah, oké, okay, nou hartstikke goed. Gewoon om te kijken, lekker onder het parasol. Je vergeet niets meer, hè? Dat is verbranden hier allemaal hier. Nou, de afwachting, daar komen ze, dames en heren. Geef ze even een ongelooflijk applaus. Nederland en Frankrijk! Welcome to all the viewers. Uh, we are about to get started with the finals between France and Netherlands. Meanwhile, you can see the teams are lining up, uh, representing their respective countries. 
Dutch being represented by the blue jerseys. Uh, the, uh, we would like to thank all the spo their sponsor, Sinner, and as well as who happens to be the sponsor of this event. We have um, starting here, Corentine Lecrief, Lorraine Bauman, Thomas Fairley, Ophelia Cassier, and Charlotte Gansi. Team the Netherlands, Russell Muns, Imke van der Aar, Wessel van der Aar, Chloe Meijer, and Iris van Leijsen. And Gijs Duis, sorry, Gijs Duis, excuse. Hey! Amazing. Dames en heren, laat u nog één keer horen. Please make some noise for Netherlands versus France. All right, the referee is ready with the toss. The first match is between Brusselmans Imke van der Aar from Netherlands versus Corentin Lesserf and Laurent Beaumont from France. One of the referees being Frey Cox on the sidelines of the court there. Excellent environment, cool Dutch music happening in the background, uh, beautiful sunshine. Couldn't be a better day to play a fantastic sport like Air Badminton. And we have got a lot of functionaries from BWF, uh, from Badminton Netherlands, as well as of course top players from each of these European countries who are participating in the European qualifiers. All looking forward to securing their berth in Bali for the finals of Air Badminton Championships happening in month of August. Well, meanwhile, uh, for all the viewers on the line, if you have any burning questions about Air Badminton or uh, what are the advantages and things that we could do to help it succeed even better, feel free to share and we'll be happy to look at your comments, take your feedback, as well as answer some of the questions that you may have. So looking forward for a lot of interaction on the line. So keep those messages coming. Russell Munz and Imke Fanda are warming up. Well, you don't need to warm up for air badminton, do you? It's already so hot, it's almost 32 degrees Celsius in Werkendam in Netherlands, uh, which is quite uncommon, but it's a fantastic start of the summer. That's summer. And, uh, well, you'll hardly spend 30 seconds to just get warmed up, I guess. The players who are not playing nicely sitting and slouching in, in their chairs on the sidelines uh, supporting their teammates as they are doing all the hard work on the right, on the France field with Lecrief and uh, Lorraine Bama for France and Russell Mons and Imke van der Aar for Netherlands all right we are ready for the first match between Netherlands and Ladies France and on my right the Netherlands and on my left France France to serve Level. All right, Lorraine serving. One left. France has been doing exceptional in badminton lately over last five to ten years. Um, a lot of youth taking up badminton as a serious sport. And uh, it's been phenomenal to see France's growth in this uh, in this particular sport. So I would like to congratulate the entire country of France for doing so well and producing top-notch talent to represent our country within Europe as well as outside of Europe. Excellent punch shot by the French pair, uh, catching Russell a bit <clears throat> on the wrong foot there and deceiving him. French maintaining aggressive mindset, however, not succeeding to score a point on that particular rally. That gives the first point to Dutch and a service called by Imke. Bye. 
All right, French taking a healthy lead of six points, eight to two, and that's the point when the teams change the ends. And this is a practice followed to ensure that both the teams benefit from the weather conditions. Of course, wind speed and the wind direction plays a huge role in the trajectory of Air Badminton Shuttle, and it is important that both the teams get uh, equal advantage of of that. Um, of the environmental conditions so that's the reason why it's being done so that gives a chance for hopefully dutch to experience this side of the court and maybe benefit from it if at all the wind was working in the fair of french so far Alright, Dutch making a slow re-entry into the game here. Uh, still a four point advantage or lead for French till now. French are playing really well. They are very well coordinated among themselves. Uh, Quarantine Lesserf and Lorraine Baumann versus Russell Munz and Imke van der of Netherlands. To all the viewers who have who have been kindly tuning into the YouTube live stream, do post your questions. Do tell us how you find air badminton as a concept. Uh, if you find it innovative, can we make it even better? And how you find it more accessible for the masses across the world? As for here, it has been an electric environment created by Badminton Netherlands, the air badminton team of Badminton Netherlands. Uh, thanks to our sponsor Sinner and Victor. To support this unique event of European Championships or European Qualifications 2023, uh, all the teams are looking forward to securing their berth in World Championships happening in the month of August in exotic Bali. Unfortunately, missing that kill, Imke. 
that was a beautifully constructed rally. Just out. So, French continue the lead and building upon it with 12 to 7. In a couple of moments, we will also recap the rules of team relay event so that the viewers who are new to the concept of innovative air badminton also come to know the rules and are able to follow and uh, understand how the game is being played and how it progresses. A team relay event is called a tie in which five matches are played. Those five matches consist of one women's doubles, one men's doubles, one mixed doubles and a pretty cool concept of two triples which contains either two male players and one female player or two female players and one male player. As for the scoring, the first match which is happening right now between France and Netherlands, this match will be going on till the point number 16, whichever team reaches that position first. And from that point onwards, the second match will start, which will go on till the point number 32. 11, Excellent judgment by Imke. Uh, Russell to serve. As you can see, it is not so easy to follow your traditional sense or your muscle memory of doing the footwork that you do on a conventional badminton court. Uh, the sand makes it even more difficult for people or the players to adjust themselves, ensuring that they are reaching the shuttle in time, but, but most importantly, uh, are able to coordinate with their partners, may it be a doubles match or a triples event. Dutch making a nice comeback here with 12 to 13. At one point in time, they were lagging behind by five points, and that's some great comeback by Dutch, uh, although Russell missing that point over there. So as you can see, already a couple of times, uh, killing the shuttle, if at all it's up in the air, uh, can often be a bit uh, difficult compared to conventional badminton match. Uh, Russell and Imke missing that point a couple of times. So. The players have to be more reliant on shots like drives or clears. The age-old drops may not exactly apply in this case, uh, given that there is a dead zone defined between the net and two meters on either of the sides. So, well, the first tie is won by French. Quarantine Lesserf and Laurent Baumann, uh, 16 to 12, which makes a uh, Dutch team lagging by four points. And we will now continue with the first triple event. Quarantine Lesserf will actually continue playing the second match as well consecutively for her. Uh, her partners would be Thomas Vallet and Ophelia Cassier. And from Netherlands, it will be Russell Munz again. That's the second match for him. Joined by Wissel van der Aar and Chloe Meyer. Please make some noise for France versus Netherlands. All right, let's make some noise for them.
Ready to play? All right, we are getting started with the second match, or the second match, which happens to be a tie uh, of, of triples. As I mentioned, Corinne de Thomas Vallet, and Ophelia Cassia from France competing against Russell Munz, Whistle Front R, and Chloe Maher from Netherlands. French leading by five points here. Excellent environment out here in Werkendam. Uh, beautiful 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, perfect uh, environmental conditions for an exciting sport like air badminton to take place and Euro European qualifications to happen. All the supporting players are sitting with their umbrellas on, uh, protecting themselves from sun and also conserving their energy. It can physically be quite taxing to play in uh, this bit of heat uh, and that too in a sand setting where uh, it, it can be quite intensive for, for running around. All right, Russell to serve. Excellent smash by French, right in the middle of Chloe and Bissell. A uh, bit of misunderstanding over there. Uh, the referee called it out. Or maybe not. Looks like it's, it was a point for French. Uh, just falling in the dead zone uh, for the small lift that Chloe did in front of the court. Beautiful placement by French. French are working with a very good strategy. They are deliberately leaving almost 40% of the field quite open and ensuring that uh, they are not letting any confusion creep in within three of them as of who's taking the shuttle. The moment someone hits a shuttle, they are making it a point to go outside of the court so that it doesn't cause any confusion for the rest of the two players, which is a fine strategy. Uh, we also see Chloe and Dutch players doing the same and uh, that could be a pretty good tactic for a beginner who's trying out air badminton for the first time and trying to play in a triple event of how to coordinate well among your team members. We will get a chance to speak with some of the European players who are representing their country in these qualification rounds later in the day. So stay tuned for our, to our YouTube channel to get to listen to their thoughts on their experiences as, as badminton players who are also trying out an innovative sport like air badminton.
All right, French taking a clear lead over here. It does sound like they have uh, spent a lot of time practicing for this event, all important one. And uh, they are con they continue to stretch their lead to 20 to 13, which is a more than a healthy lead. Just going into the second match of this qualification finals. Good smash by Whistle, right on the body. To all the viewers on the YouTube stream, thank you so much for joining wherever you are in the world. You are, I hope you are having a fantastic day so far or already had one. If you are in Asian countries, thank you so much for joining. I hope you are enjoying this event. And if you have any questions on the rules or you want to know about a few players in the European circuit playing air badminton for their countries, do not hesitate to drop a message in the chat box and we'll try to keep up with uh, all the messages coming in. Frey Cox in action there, explaining the rules uh, to both the parties there. Um, Looks like there was a bit of confusion around whose point it was. Seems to be sorted out. French look a bit apprehensive of the decision. However, the play goes on. And good judgment by Whistle. Well, French seem to be disagreeing with this, that decision as well. It seems like umpire called it in. However, French kind of lodged a formal protest around it and looks like the f decision is reversed, eventually giving the point back to French. Good judgment by French players. A service fault going outside the court. Excellent smash by French. Well, that gives a second tie to French as well. Uh, extremely healthy lead of 32 to 18, 14 point difference. And well played by French players. That gives a two out of five matches in a French favor. Uh, the next match is going to be women's doubles. French team will comprise of Ophelia Cachier and Charlotte Ganshi. And Dutch team will consist of Imke van der Aar and Iris van Leijse. This is going to be a crucial match for Dutch 
uh, to make sure that they are able to make a bit of a recovery in this overall scoring. The, the tie is won by the team who reaches 80 points first. Uh, we are in the third tie as of now. However, there are three ties yet to go on. And by end of the fifth tie, whoever, whichever team reaches 80 points first is the winner of, of the match. The French look uh, clear favorites over here, uh, given the healthy lead that they have got in the first two matches. So let's see if Dutch are able to turn it around over the next three games. There are several players of different countries roaming around, waiting for the chance to perform and participate into their individual matches. It can be super tiring for the umpires to uh, keep a close eye as well as stand there for duration of team relay event, especially on a hot day like this in Werkendam, which uh, and we are experiencing a uh, temperature in excess of 30 degrees Celsius. It is quite hard for players to perform in a beach setting uh, with sand under their feet and especially for the umpires to keep a close eye as well as um, ensure they are always on the lookout for every single decision and point being played. French represented by Ophelia and Charlotte Kanji and Netherlands represented by Imke van der Aar and Iris van Leise. All the four players seem content keeping the rallies on, waiting for the opponents to make a mistake and pouncing upon that kill opportunity. A flexor by Imke, yielding returns immediately by helping us score the point. Well, French ladies seem to be maintaining a healthy lead and they are continuing that lead for last few points now. Um, excellent punch shot. I almost feel like you have to fight against your own muscle memory playing uh, a beach sport like air badminton uh, for players who have been 
for years practicing and training hard in the traditional or conventional badminton matches uh, for matches rather Excellent neutral play by Dutch ladies, uh, keeping the rally on, keeping the rally on and waiting for the right uh, time, uh, eventually scoring that point. But yes, uh, going to that point, I think it's just a different physics in play over here with the sand underneath your feet. Uh, you're trying to ensure that you are uh, maintaining a good body balance as well as excellent coordination with your partner. Um, it is not an individual um, event where you are only responsible for your own actions you have to play in double setting or a triple setting to compensate for the the lack of agility and uh, pace on the court uh, given the the sand underneath your feet uh, so it does require s its own unique tactics that for you to learn and ensure that you are being effective as a player all right Dutch ladies uh, marginally reducing the lead that French were holding for last two games. However, still uh, nine point difference between the two teams. A few errors creeping in French's game. Frey Cox, the umpire or referee in action. Enthusiastic and vibrant as always. Uh, you, as you can see on your screen, the rest of the players kind of chilling out, enjoying the beach setting, as well as trying to cheer their fellow teammates who are in action on the field. Excellent drop by French ladies. Uh, eventually dropping right in front of Iris van Leyse and capitalizing and taking advantage of the of the space in front of the Dutch ladies. That's a great example of patience and keeping the neutral ra neutral style of game on. Uh, just taking the time and keeping the long rallies seem to be benefiting Dutch women more than French. Uh, French, uh, uh, given their lead and their attacking mindset, would like to s score quick points. However, in a few cases now we have seen long rallies ends up helping Dutch women more. And you, that's all probably also an example over there. So slowly and steadily, Dutch are reducing that deficit and now it's only six point difference which makes it five now so wonderful performance by Iris and Imke to get their country back in action and back for a for a good chance in winning this bout Good judgment by French. Finally, they break the streak of Dutch women scoring points in a flurry.
Good judgment by French again. Well, we have reached 40. French are first to get there, which means that there will be change of ends. Uh, just to repeat, the change of ends is being done to ensure that both the teams benefit from the weather conditions. Uh, wind, speed, and the direction plays a pretty significant role in the trajectory and flight of the shuttle. So the change of ends is being done to ensure that both the team get fair chances to uh, benefit or battle against the wind factor. Excellent presence of mind by French, uh, making Imka run first, rather, sorry, uh, making Iris run first to the back, keeping the rally on right in the middle of the Dutch ladies, and then capitalizing and positioning the shuttle in the vacant spaces. Now, this turning out to be a fine match between Dutch and French, and thanks to Imka and Iris for bringing Dutch back into this whole tie. Only four point difference now. Wow, well, that's a turnaround, right? At one point in time, there were almost 16 point difference between French and Dutch. French really seem to be enjoying their time out in this spectacular event. Excellent party like atmosphere. Good music, a lot to do for kids. Good badminton clinics organized as well by Badminton Netherland. All in all, a fantastic experience for everybody involved. Brilliant smash by Imke right in the middle of the French ladies. That's some serious comeback by Dutch. It seemed pretty unlikely 15 minutes ago. However, uh, it has been kind of a change in the, well, a big twist in the whole story. Again, long rallies helping Dutch women. That strategy seems to be working very well. Now we have seen quite a few points where Dutch have been extremely smart in keeping the rally on and they have been the end beneficiaries of that strategy. The lead reduced to just two points. Wow, that's a massive change in the situation. Given this massive feedback, uh, f fight back by Dutch women, this probably has to be one of the longest matches happening in the team relay event between semifinals and finals. Uh, just out, unfortunately, for Dutch. However, French would be hoping to close out this match as soon as they can and then move on to the next one. Clearly, uh, feeding into Dutch strategy of keeping the rallies wrong is not helping their energy levels, especially if they intend to play the uh, consecutive matches after this one as well. A few mistakes creeping in. 
by Dutch. All right, uh, as a recap, this match will go on till 48 points, whichever team reaches that point first. So if French score two more points, then they will end up winning this match. If Dutch score six points and happen to reach 48 first, then they would win the match. However, you got to admire the the fighting spirit of Dutch women. They have made a massive comeback after the first couple of games, which did not go in their favor. So, great job by Iris van Leyse and Imke van der Aar to get Dutch back in the whole tie. Ah, oh, looks like he looks like there was a. Shuttle touch the racket of French player. <laughs> and the scores leveled four to six all. Wow. I'm sure the whole Dutch team is proud of the of their two female players, Imke and Iris, for getting them back in the tie. All right, one more point to go for this match to end. Let's see who makes it. Two points for Dutch, one point for French. Required to win this game. <laughs> what a turnaround! Wow, I got to give it to uh, Iris and uh, and uh, Imke for winning the third match and getting Dutch back in this whole tie. Uh, that's that's a massive comeback. They were they were having such a big deficit after the end of the first two matches, and for these two ladies to bring Dutch uh, to not only equal but actually winning the third match is phenomenal. Uh, well, congratulations to uh, Dutch and we will now commence with the fourth match in the team relay event between France and Netherlands. France is being represented by Lorraine Baumann, Thomas Vallée and Charlotte Ganchi. And Netherlands is being represented by Kai Staus, Gail Mahulete and Iris van Leysen again. Wow, that's a, second con that's a consecutive match for Iris van Leysen and she has really battled it out hard in the first game. So we are going to probably see how she's able to cope up and keep up her energy level up for the fourth game of this Team Relay event. Uh, as as you must have heard, uh, it's it's a pretty hot day. Uh, it's ranging in, uh, the temperature ranging in the numbers of 30 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot for uh, this part of the world. Uh, this event is happening in a town called Werkendam in the Netherlands. A uh, fantastic setting created by Badminton Netherland, Air Badminton team working for Badminton Netherland and uh, it sure promises to be a fantastic weekend. All in the interest of the sport that we all love. The beauty of Air Badminton happens to be that you are not constrained by the halls and the infrastructure around you. Everybody is free to play as far as they find an open public space for themselves. Beach happens to be a fantastic location where if you can find a beach nearby to where you live throughout the world you won't be able to enjoy this fantastic sport as well. We would like to thank our sponsor, Sinner. Uh, do check out their summer products. Uh, as well as Victor, who happens to be the second sponsor for this event. 
the finals of air badminton uh, event or the world championship would take place in Bali, Indonesia in the month of August. And I'm sure French as well as Dutch are keen and obviously fighting it out hard to secure that spot. So for Charlotte from France and Iris from Netherlands, this happens to be the consecutive match and it would be a, a small examination of how they are able to keep up with the energy levels and help their teams do well in the fourth match of this tie. All right, the score is going neck to neck. 50 for France, 51 for Netherlands. It couldn't have been more exciting for such a high profile match between the two countries. Good judgment by French. Brilliant placement by French triple team. Uh, this match would go on till 56 points. Whoever reaches that point first for the change of ends to take place. Once the change of ends take place, the match would continue on to till 64 points. And whichever points reaches that uh, land or that milestone first would be the winner of this match. This happens to be the fourth match in the five-match team relay event between Netherlands and France. The fifth and final match will be a race towards 80 points and the team or the country which reaches that milestone first would be the winner of this tie. All right, French reclaiming a bit of lead that they had in the beginning of the tie. A very spicy match going on right now. Oh, that was an easy point. Uh, unfortunately missed by French players. French do appear to be a bit more coordinated among themselves. Uh, 
and uh, have a seem to have very good understanding among themselves of who's going to take the shuttle. Uh, one of the rules of the game is that the same person cannot hit the shuttle twice in a rally. So they have to make sure that the person who just hit the shuttle moves out of the way and does not create any potential confusion for the other two players on the field. And in, in making sure that there is simplicity and lack of confusion, French seem to be doing tad better in general. But Dutch are also fighting it out quite well. Uh, uh, the scores are really close to each other, neck to neck. Uh, the final result can go either way. As I mentioned before, now is the time that the teams change ends to uh, to make sure that the game is fair for both the teams, given the environmental conditions, the wind speed, uh, as well as the wind direction. So let's see if that change of ends benefits one particular team over the next 10 to 12 minutes. Excellent arrangement by audio video guys, DJs uh, creating a party-like atmosphere here. Uh, wonderful weather for everyone to chill out, enjoy the beach-like environment. Thanks to our sponsor Sinners and Victor for supporting this event. Excellent commitment by Kai Stash, uh, really diving deep <laughs> into the forehand corner, uh, enabling his team to win the uh, win the point. That extends the lead of Netherlands actually by three points, which is uh, a massive comeback by Dutch. They need six points more to win this match. You got to give it to Iris van Lysa. She she's playing her second match consecutively, and uh, she she and her partner Imke Fanta really fought out well in the dub women's doubles game, uh, where they helped Dutch to make a massive comeback. And in on top of that, she is now performing extremely impressively for the triples event. On the screen, it might look like it's a slower version of badminton. However. Once you start playing, the sand comes into effect. There are uh, you, you got to forget your muscle memory at times to make sure that you are still able to keep your body balanced. Uh, you are able to do the lunges with the moving sand underneath your feet, which makes it a totally different sport. Excellent placement by Iris again, right in the middle of the three. French players, good rally. Uh, what we saw in the last match of women's doubles was keeping the rallies long was a strategy that, that worked in Dutch's favor. And uh, in first two games, the impression was that the rallies were largely not as long, which helped French win more the more points, but uh, good placement by Gail Mahuleta on that occasion. A French playing with two women and one and one male player in the triples event. And the same goes for Dutch as well. Four more points required for Netherlands to win this match and six more points required for France at least. Yeah. 
good judgment by Hayes on that occasion. 61 to 58 in Dutch's favor. The flicks are going a bit long. Excellent presence of mind by Gail Mahuleta doing a cross drop and really making the French uh, woman player run in the front and thereby creating that error on her part. Frey Cox again in action. Brilliant place by Mike Heist Dash. One point to go for Dutch to win this match as well. Excellent judgment by Iris Van Lysa just out. And that means that Dutch have won their second match consecutively. That makes a tie with 2-2 for French and Dutch and uh, makes the final even more spicier. So let's wait for the finals to take place. Uh, the last match is going to be played in the men's doubles category. French are being represented by Corentin Lesserf and Thomas Vallée. And Dutch are being represented by Heistaus again and Wissel van der Aar. The second match for guys in succession. So uh, as as we saw with Iris van Lysen before, let's see how Heis is able to keep up with his energy level for the second second match now. There are lots of functionaries and uh, uh, hardworking people from BWF uh, present to the event today. We will get a chance to uh, listen in their thoughts, their strategies around helping badminton grow. Uh, it has been such a beloved sport across the world, across all the continents. And uh, there have been certainly some really innovative ideas as well as hard work which has gone into place into creating such events like these. Kudos to Badminton Netherlands as well, as well as Air Badminton team uh, for making a fun experience for all the attendees of this event in person, as well as the viewers around the world who have joined this event. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, part of this event. If you have any remarks, questions, or observations on the matches that you are seeing, do not hesitate to put it on the chat, chat box. We'll try to keep an eye out on it between the matches. Thank you. All right, we are back with the fifth match of the ma of the finals between Netherlands and France. This match will be played till the 80-point milestone. And whichever team reaches that milestone first happens to be the winner of the match and hope the tie. The, there will be change of ends taking place at point number 72 for people who are still trying to learn the rules of air badminton. 
uh, that is done in order to make sure that both the teams benefit from the environmental conditions. Good commitment by Dussel Fandar. Now extending that lead to seven points. We have seen multiple times during the event today that it's not as easy to just smash a shuttle. It often it often hits the net, and uh, the traditional way of killing a rally may or may not be as effective in the beach badminton or air badminton. So I'm sure the players are trying to adapt themselves and trying to see what is the more effective way of scoring points. Uh, long rallies, lifts, clears, drives seem to be more common. There's one sport that we do not see the those delicate drops, the tumbling net drops, since there is a dead zone defined between the net and an area of two meters on either of the sides. And if the shuttle lands in the dead zone, it's a, it's a point for the opponent. After the end of this uh, match, we are going to have a special guest on our channel. Uh, so make sure that you do not leave the stream because you're going to get some valuable insights from Director of Development of BWF, Ian Wright. Uh, and we will be interviewing him after the end of uh, this particular match. And it will be a great opportunity for audiences worldwide to know his vision, strategy, and uh, ideas around the future development of badminton. So uh, Ian Wright, a known name in the badminton world, uh, has been with BWF for a long, long time, implementing his ideas, has done a lot of work, and has been a formal player within England. So uh, really an uh, insightful interview coming your way in a few minutes from now. Stay tuned for it. Scores tied again, 69 all. Whoever reaches 72 points first, that will be the milestone when the change of ends will occur. Hey. 
Beautiful drop shot by French. Indecisiveness by Dutch, and uh, that gives a slender lead to French uh, to the point that they would now change the ends. There's not much between the two teams. I would say it's pretty even Stevens at this point in time, and largely thanks to the Dutch ladies for their valiant effort in the third game of women's doubles, where they really fought it out hard, uh, wiped out the deficit that they had and eventually br brought the Dutch back into the tie. Excellent return by French, uh, which eventually led in indecisiveness by Dutch player Kais. Um, it's pretty fair to summarize that both the teams are at a pretty equal skill level in this game. A second time that uh, there has been an, a bit of indecisiveness in the rear part of the court on the Dutch end. I wonder if Wynn has a part to play in that decision making of whether to take or leave the shuttle uh, in the rear part of the court. <laughs> what a fantastic return and defense by French. Uh, not only they retired the shuttle, in a very difficult situation, they returned it back with interest to the point that they ended up winning the rally. Fantastic anticipation and retrieval by French player. Well, glory awaits French if they have if they make sure that they secure next four points and reach the milestone of 80 first. Excellent kill by Whistle. Now the Dutch are on the attack. They have been trying to hit right at the body of French players, which has been yielding some fruits. Uh, last two to three points have been scored that way. 
the strategy seems to be making sure that they push one of the French players back first and then attack the other player. French slowly crawling towards the number of 80 with a two point lead. The players that you are seeing in the event today happen to be some of the best national talents of their respective countries. So for for players who are as good as these players, um, you can imagine the change that they have to embrace when they have to compete with a different set of conditions in a, uh, in a beach-like setting. Um, so it might appear to be a game a bit on a slow end compared to the conventional badminton match. However, there is still a lot of effort involved from this player's point of view to make sure that they are still performing well and scoring for their country. So don't let the appearance on the screen deceive you when it comes to the effort being put in by the players so far. All right, one point away from the glory, French. Let's see if Dutch are able to restrict them over the next three points. Beautiful deceptive drop shot by Heistas. And that helps French win the finals and secure their place in Bali. Congratulations to the French. Uh, they seem sure ecstatic about this victory. But boy, wasn't it one hard fought tie between Dutch and French. It all went down to the wire. Kudos to all the players who have been battling it out against hot conditions and uh, some serious skill level on both the sides. Big congratulations to French for winning this bout and well played to Dutch for making sure that it was a very good fight among the two countries. Uh, well done to all the referees and umpires who have also been patiently keep being attentive and making sure that they are very focused on every single point. Dutch spectators over there, understandably a bit disappointed with the outcome. However, for sure it was an extremely good match between French and Dutch. It's fantastic to see uh, players from all nationalities within Europe uh, who are attending the event today having a great time, dancing to the groove and the beats of music happening here, um, making best use of their time over here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining so far. Uh, we would encourage you to, to keep tuned in to the stream. In a, in, a, in a few moments from now, we are going to be privileged to uh, have Ian Wright, the Director of Development at BWF, uh, who's based in Malaysia, and he's going to share his insights and experiences throughout his badminton career, as well as the vision that he has as uh, someone in charge of development of the sport. Uh, so it would be wonderful uh, to listen to his insights, his experience, as well as what growth plans he has for our beloved sport. Stay tuned. We'll be back again.
Yeah. Well, Testing, one, two. C can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, can you hear good. me well? Yes, yeah, good. All yeah. right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying tuned in for on our YouTube live stream for Air Badminton AWBG European Qualifiers 2023. Uh, we are out, you are reporting out of work and down in Netherlands. Uh, we have a beautiful sunny day right now here uh, with temperatures ranging between 30 and 32 degrees Celsius. And now we are having a very special guest on our live stream, uh, Ian Wright. Uh, Ian, welcome, first of all. Thank you. Uh, Ian happens to be the development director of BWF and he's based in uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Ian is a known name in the name of in the world of badminton. He has been the head coach of England for several years. Now he has been working in the capacity of being a development director, and that's a pretty important position. So we are here today to know all about Ian's career, uh, his uh, his current role, uh, the growth of badminton, as well as exciting events like Air Badminton that we are uh, here in to witness today. So again, welcome Ian. Ian, we would love to kind of get a quick glimpse of your career in badminton to begin and you know get it started. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I guess I was, when I started full time, I start my first full time job was with Badminton England as uh, coaching manager, and that was uh, more around coach education and junior development. Uh, from there, I graduated, I guess you'd say, to national coach. I went to Norway as national coach, and then had quite a good uh, period of time where I was uh, head coach in France mm -hmm. before I went back to uh, run the English and the Great Britain program. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I uh, did a little bit of consultancy work, I uh, did a little bit of commentary actually, oh, like you yourself, <laughs> yeah, did a little bit of commentary for BWF. Maybe I can take some tips from you. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the other way around, let's see. Uh, and then uh, eventually I did a little piece of consultancy for BWF and from there uh, got invited to join the staff and uh, it's been great. 13 years later, I'm still there. Wow, fantastic. And then you have, uh, we have had quite a journey in Europe itself, right? Uh, you have been uh, involved with French development as such. Let me ask you out of curiosity, uh, the French have been doing exceedingly well over the last few years. Yeah. And uh, what are some of the factors that you see at BWF of why they have been so successful at this sport in comparison to some of the other countries in the region? Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, it's a good question. Um, when I first went there, uh, badminton was quite a young sport, really. Um, it started to get funding when badminton went into the Olympics in 92. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was a very marginal sport. Right. But once it became an Olympic sport and got government funding, uh, the growth started. And what France do very well is they build structures, they build re regional structures and a pyramid system up to the uh, Olympic Centre uh, in SEP. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's taken time, but they're getting there. They've got a really good depth of player now. It's not just the top few. The, the level in the Division 1 Inter Club is very strong. And regionally, the regional centres, the Kreps, they're, they're also very strong now. They've got a lot of good young players coming through. Uh, the boy that's ranked number one in the world at, in, in the juniors at the moment, Alex, I mean, super player, super talent. Alex Lanier, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's it's really nice from my perspective. I spent nearly 13 years there. Okay. So it's really, really nice to see that they've kicked on and uh, achieving really good results. What can some of the other countries learn from an example like France, in your opinion? I think it's structure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, there are a few countries in Europe that have uh, that have been able to do that. But the catalyst really was for a lot of the European countries, the Olympic status. Mm -hmm. When we got in yeah. for 92, Barcelona, it changed a lot of things. Spain is another very, very good example. Absolutely. Very, very structured approach to uh, player development and player pathway. Mm -hmm. Very transparent steps for the players. They know what they've got to do to get to the next level. And it works very well for them. And France, similarly, really. Yeah, I, I know for a fact that Badminton Netherlands is trying to do a lot in this area of cultivating good mentors, good coaches, yeah. so that they can really bring up the young talent right from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, when did you move to Kuala Lumpur? Uh, just changing a bit of gear over here, but... <laughs> uh, uh, 2010. All right, okay. 2010. And was it for the current role that you... Yeah, got it's for the development role. At the time, uh, I was the development department. Right. It, okay. was, a, it was a one man band uh, trying to do a lot of different things. But slowly we've been able to build up a really good young team, and uh, now we're. I'm able to do a li little bit more delegation. All right. Hel help us understand what the scope of your team as a development team of badminton as a sport. Yeah, sure. What are you guys char in charge of? Uh, it, it's a very widespread, mm -hmm. I have to say. We look after the uh, five continental confederations in terms of funding and funding models, uh, so we work very closely with the five continental offices. 
uh, that sits under development, then all the educational programs uh, sit under development, and now Air Badminton's come through as a project from the development department as well. But our biggest project is still Shuttle Time, the, the school's program. We've got 157 countries now implementing the program. We've got 28 different language versions. That's really uh, wow. takes a lot of takes a lot of management, but it's been it's been really motivating to be in that project from day one to see where it is today. It's it's been a great journey, and I think we're going to have the same journey with Air Badminton. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, uh, I think uh, what we have been hearing as a first impression is that it's an, an extremely innovative concept. So uh, talk us through how did the development team within BWF end up with such an innovation of Air Badminton. Uh, and what are you? What were your thoughts around launching such a concept? Look, it, it, it goes back a long way. Actually, people don't realise. People have only seen it recently being played, and we got a little bit held up with COVID, as everybody right. did. But um, the key was developing a shuttle that's more resistant to outdoor conditions, and that took that took six years. We worked in partnership with uh, NTU down in Singapore, University Technical University down in Singapore. And uh, if you ever get the chance to visit BWF in KL, you'll see on the desk at the back of my office, there's, I think, there's 54 different prototypes that we went through uh, to eventually arrive at this design. Uh, it was one step forward, two steps back. A lot of the time it was quite frustrating. But in the end, we needed, to, we needed the product because then we were able to design the game around the characteristics of the shuttle so that the game made sense in terms of the speed of the shuttle and how much resistance you get to wind with it and how it, how it plays in windy conditions. So uh, the shuttle was key. Then we were able to build on the rules and regulations. Then we started piloting events and Badminton Netherlands have been a partner with us since the start. Also, we've had good partners down in Dubai run a lot of test events for us. And various other countries have helped and come on board. Uh, but yeah, I guess the, the game changer was getting into the World Beach Games for this year in Bali. We were lucky. Uh, it's probably, if I'm being honest, a little bit early for us, but because it's Indonesia, Indonesia, the land of badminton, it was a no-brainer that we had to try and get in. Fortunately, we were successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are today playing the regional qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, what, I mean, you have been a long time uh, advocate of badminton. You have worked almost all your career within the sport of badminton. Um, how how do you uh, make a mental change happen and embrace the change when it comes to innovation happening in sport? Right? Uh, there are there are diehard thousands and thousands of lovers across the world who have been used to the conventional sport of badminton in a sport hall. And then how do you how do you make it more attractive? How do you say that? Well, this also helps your goals of being leading a healthy lifestyle and you know fitness objectives. So. From air badminton point of view, what are some of the key points that you would like to highlight as advantages for every single person who loves the sport of badminton? Well, wow. there's a lot of elements to that question. I mean, uh, we we actually sponsor a lot of sports science research into the health benefits of badminton, but also the psychological benefits of badminton as well for children gaining confidence, socialising. Uh, the straight line sports tend to be individual. Uh, badminton is a much more social, socially based mm -hmm. sport. Also for the elderly as well, there are a lot of health advantages. It's low impact. So there's a lot, there's a lot of health benefits for us to sell and we have a physical activity uh, policy mm -hmm. where we reference all of the research that's out there and explain to people why badminton's healthy. In terms of Air Badminton, it's going to hit, uh, I'm sure it's going to hit a lot of different targets for us. We still have a lot of uh, less developed members. Right. We have 197 members. Yeah. Many of those don't have access to top quality indoor facilities. Right. And this gives them a competitive outlet, which is accessible to them. Mm -hmm. So yes, we'll hit. We want to hit the participation market with it, but also we want to give our less developed countries an opportunity to be competitive, uh, but in an accessible manner, something mm -hmm. that's easy for them to set up and to play and then to compete. And I think, I think this is going to be a big success. So in four weeks' time, we've got the uh, African Beach Games okay. in Tunisia, which will be the qualifying event for Africa. Wow. Uh, we, we're, we have limited numbers. It's a multi-sport game, so we were only able to invite eight teams. Mm -hmm. We had 17 teams from Africa wanting to play. Wow. That's a big number for Africa. 
because they see the African countries see that this is an opportunity for them to be competitive mm -hmm. and to actually prepare mm -hmm. without needing too many facilities and right. too much equipment. Right, right. And I, I can totally imagine the, the benefits that some of the Western countries like Netherlands uh, have, especially in, in summertime when there is usually a, a period of six weeks of vacation. So when you do not po possibly have access to the sport halls, you can still enjoy badminton at a, at a beach location uh, and with your family and friends still keeping in touch with your sport. I mean, the, the participation side is still enormous. We right. want, you know, our, our vision is giving every child a chance to play for life. That's, that's the PWF's uh, vision mm -hmm. statement. Uh, and we really believe that. I mean, in the development department, that's on our wall. Mm -hmm. That's that's our objective. We want to create programs that give everybody access to the sport. Right. So it's really important. What I like about Netherlands is they're open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, they're open to innovation. And in sport today, if you're not innovating and trying things, you're losing ground. Yeah. There's so many sports doing a doing a really good job at the moment that if we just stand still, right. We go. If we stand still, we're going backwards. Right. You know, we're seeing more and more on TV uh, things like paddle. Mm -hmm. We see table tennis have improved their sports presentation quite a lot over the last sort of 18 months or so. So we've got to we've got to move with it. We've got to we've got to invest in the game mm -hmm. and make it attractive to people. Mm -hmm. I, I think well, when I, when I saw the match today, uh, it was uh, to be honest, it was my first time that I saw a real okay. live air badminton match taking place, right? But I found rules to be extremely well thought out. Uh, just to ensure that you know people are able to enjoy the sport, uh, you know, reduce the risk of injuries. Uh, you know, having a, z a concept like dead zones yeah. is an extremely good concept, so that you know people don't have to lunge too far, and then make sure that they are still able to keep the rally on, make it a bit more exciting for the audiences. So, kudos to your team for making it such a such a uh, entertaining sport. Yeah, the the dead zone is an interesting one. Um, actually, the characteristic of the shuttle is we need it to rotate quickly to resist the wind. Mm -hmm. So it's about rotation. But the problem with rotation is if we allow net play, mm -hmm. the shuttle just spins until it hits the floor. Right. That's the characteristics of the shuttle. So we had to take out net play mm -hmm. and that meant putting that zone in the middle so the players have to push the shuttle and not try and spin it. Spin it, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually you're right. And what that also does, it encourages rallies. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of statistics. We did a lot of testing down in the south of Spain to start with to, to build the rules and the regulations. And we had some really top players down there working with us, and you know, everybody had ideas, and this is this is this is the end product. But I guess it's not the end product. Yeah. Because we're still learning. It's early days. There'll be changes, but I think we've got the makings of a really attractive package. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, looking at the conventional badminton. And, air ba and innovative ideas like badminton. How do you see the way forward for both the sports to coexist? Or do you see them as re excellent complements to each other? Or do you see them as more of individual sports that can hold its ground quite well in terms of audience attraction as well as player attraction? A bit of both. Mm -hmm. I think we can attract a different market. Mm -hmm. For example, with uh, badminton, uh, we're, prob we're going to attract a different type of sponsor for, right. for outdoor right. than we are for badminton. Mm -hmm. So th there's going to be di the, the commercial model will be will be different. Right. Um, I think they're complementary in the sense that it will be uh, many many people start playing badminton outdoors when they're children yeah. in the summer, like you were saying. Right. So and then they convert to indoor. Well, now there's another option for them, and I you know. I look at I look at what's happening with the Olympic movement, and there's been, you know, it used to be that the timeline to get a new sport into the Olympics was 20 years, five editions. That's all changed and under the current management at IOC. Mm -hmm. It's now possible if you've got an attractive product, it's possible for you to go and put a case. And why not Air Badminton in the future? Mm -hmm. We have a good reputation within the Olympics as a as, as a badminton international badminton federation. Right. Uh, once we've built this up a little bit more and we've popularised it a little bit more, mm -hmm. why not? Why not Olympics? Yeah, and I think it, as you said, I think sponsorship is a huge topic. Uh, it does attract, open up a lot of new options from attracting sponsors, making sure that the brands are getting their deserved visibility in such events. And I think just having a beach setting, having a very uh, vibrant kind of a environment, uh, will only make it more attractive for the people who are looking at the sport as a as an option. Yeah, I mean, you know, badminton, 
we never we were never going to have a sunglasses sponsor, <laughs> uh, but here we've got uh, Sinner as a strong partner for Netherlands mm -hmm. uh, Netherlands Federation, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the type of adverts that are around here you're never going to see in a badminton hall. Right. So it's a different audience. Right. And it's a different audience in terms of sponsors, but players, but also spectators. I think. Right. You know, today beautiful day. People yep. want to be outside. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be in a badminton hall. Right. What are some of the challenges that you see in Asia, since you have been living in Asia for such a long time now, uh, compared to Europe, uh, while implementing innovative ideas like air badminton? Well, what's been really encouraging is that a lot of the top nations have actually got behind the idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got the Asian qualifying event in two weeks' time in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. uh, China fully committed. They've, they've been preparing a team for a while now. Uh, we've got Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea... Uh, Hong Kong and Thailand have both been working with a team for a number of months now. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see what level they've got. Mm -hmm. it, this will be their first international event. They've, all of them have played some national type events. This will be the first time internationally. It will be really interesting to compare the level here to the level in uh, Asia. These players have been playing for three or four years. And we can see it from the French, the rotation of the triples and Ex yeah, exactly. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of thought and a lot of coaching gone into that getting that rotation yep. working so well. Yeah, uh, it would be really interesting to see how the Asians have adapted to it. Right. <laughs> Has it been uh, sort of a late breaking or uh, more recently adopted sport within Asian countries compared to European countries, or it's just that they have not been taken as seriously to the conventional badminton? I, I mean. Badminton's king in many of the Asian <laughs> countries, you know, that's that's our stronghold. Yeah. Um, but it's good to see that these uh, national federations now are open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some ways it's been surprising uh, how motivated they've been for the Bali Games. Mm -hmm. Arsan Setiawan are already signed up for the Indonesian team. So the host, they, as host, they've already got a team qualified. Okay. And Arsan Setiawan are on the team sheet. Wow, that's fantastic. You know that brings that raises the profile straight away. Indeed, uh, in, not only in Indonesia but in in the badminton world. Yeah, everyone's going to want to uh, look, have a look at uh, how they how they deal with that and how, right. how they play and <laughs> what it looks like. It you know, be, yeah, that would be. A it's a great way for us to start to sell the game over there. Absolutely, and, and uh, both of them such such big ambassadors of the sport, right? Uh, Fantastic, only known as daddies. But yeah, so uh, uh, talk us through some of the arrangements uh, going towards Bali, making it a success in next two months. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Progress has been a, a little bit slow, mm -hmm. you know, it's quite a new event itself, it's only the second edition mm -hmm. uh, and everybody's still learning, you know, how to, how to put it on. There's 14 sports, right. uh, we're one of them, we're in a cluster, uh, we're on one of the most iconic beaches in Bali, That's, that was, is where our venue is being constructed. We have a really, really nice stadium design, I have to say. Wow. It's going to be between 2,005, 3,000 seater stadium uh, but with a lot of uh, sports presentation elements built in there's a DJ deck built into the design mm -hmm. we've got lighting shows uh, the all the medal matches will be played under lights mm -hmm. which gives us the chance to play with the presentation as well we've got entertainment lined up we really want to up the ante in terms of how we present the game and we want to start competing with some of these sports that are a little bit ahead of us in that field mm -hmm. Uh, so everybody who's on the line, if if those are not good enough attractive points for you to uh, attend badminton, book your tickets right now. I think it's going to sell out quite fast. And then make sure that you are part of the Bali event in a couple of months from now. Um, well, uh, Ian, uh, how often do you travel between uh, Malaysia and Europe? Uh, not as much as I used to, okay. but actually I've been here four times in the last six weeks, so. <laughs> <laughs> but th that's not typical. Okay, okay, all right. Well, on that note, I would like to thank you for all your insights and, uh, you know, sharing your experience, sharing your vision of badminton. Uh, it, it sounds fantastic, very prospective, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people around the world are looking for, for the happenings that BWF brings about in helping the sport grow even more. Thank you so much for your hard work. Great, thanks for your time. Enjoyed thank you. it. <laughs>
Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, tuning into the uh, exciting interview with Ian Wright, uh, Director of Development from BWF. Uh, uh, it was extremely insightful to get to know his views, his vision, and uh, just his story in all over the last several years of having a career in badminton. We have another special guest, uh, which is going to who is going to join us in a couple of minutes. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will be revealing the name in a couple of minutes, so uh, don't go anywhere. All right, uh, to viewers all around the world, welcome again. This is Rohit Kulkarni reporting from Work and Tom, uh, trying to cover uh, the exciting and vibrant uh, environment here at Air Badminton European Qualifications 2023. We are kind of privileged to have Technical Director of Badminton Netherlands, Victor Anfilov, with us. Uh, welcome, Victor. Hi, Rod. Nice <laughs> to be here. Yes, the same here, and uh, really nice to meet you again. Um, and uh, we are really, it's lucky of us to have him because he's the one who has been the, uh, you know, uh, the thinking brain behind some of the recent advancements and development that has been happening in Netherlands specifically. But he also comes from a volleyball background himself, uh, being a top player. And uh, he has been able to marry the concepts of, you know, or fusion of both the sports in a way that benefits both the sports. And we are here to really talk about the fusion or the marriage of how he takes those points forward and how he helps market the sport in all over for our country. So, Victor, welcome again. Uh, Victor, uh, you know, for people who don't know you, uh, could you tell us a bit more about your career and how has been the trajectory looking like uh, over the past uh, several years? Yeah, sure, I will. Uh, firstly, I, I don't want to take all the credit for the development of this game. There's uh, <laughs> people at Badminton uh, Netherlands that have done a lot more work than I have. Um, but of course, now that the sport's developing into an outside beach sport, um, you're right, I do have a lot of experience uh, coming from the beach volleyball world as a, as a player and uh, uh, head coach of the national program in the Netherlands for 13 years. Um, so it's, it's, very, it's a familiar thing to me to see people playing elite sport on the sand, in the wind, in the sun. Um, and I think it's fantastic because uh, the, the, the sport of badminton is as, as, it's a complete sport. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the indoor version, uh, speed, uh, um, spatial uh, insicht, oh, that's a Dutch word, sorry. Awareness, yeah. yeah, it's okay. It has, it has so many amazing qualities and for me personally to be able to see the qualities of the sport outside in a different context is fantastic. Uh, it's a really visible product now outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's a really warm day today. So uh, I called uh, Robert, our head coach, a couple of days ago and I said, hey, listen, maybe it's interesting to go through the list of things we need to do to make sure the players are not going to be overcooked while they're playing. Um, so that, that, was, that was already, uh, I already found myself being able to add my knowledge from beach volleyball world to the, to the Air Babington world. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, uh, I've, it's just, fit. Oop, sorry. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic to see, and, um, and I'm really excited about the potential for Air Badminton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, not, and not only, not only as, a, as a visible part of, of, of the badminton sport, but to be honest with you, if you talk about youth development, if, if kids are 
playing in the summer, playing outside mm -hmm. in, a, in, in, a, in an organized sport. So mm -hmm. we're not just talking about playing badminton while they're camping. We're talking about actually, you know, having structured structural trainings, uh, learning the game, playing in a slower uh, medium that's sand. Mm -hmm. um, in our experience in beach volleyball, uh, playing in the sand in the summer, mm -hmm. when you go back to playing the indoor version, you're just faster. Right. Because your muscles have to work a lot harder to, to get you out of the sand. Right. So you have that, that physical advantage, mm -hmm. but also the fact that the shuttle is moving a lot in the wind mm -hmm. and the sun that you have to be able to learn to adjust your technique. Um, and, and that has a lot of differential right. uh, learning advantages, I think. Right. Um, in, the, in the beach volleyball sport, uh, you know, training beach volleyball all summer only makes you a better indoor volleyball player, and I, s I think that that's going to also happen. Yeah. We're also going to see that in ba air badminton, I think. Yeah, it has been quite a known concept that some of the Asian countries have been using sand as a way to develop uh, their agility, their their overall uh, strength in the legs uh, for a top sport badminton player. Yep. And I, I see a clear relevance over here when you pursue air badminton in a fun way. It does help you a lot of get benefits. Out yep. of it. Yep. Yeah, and I, I can imagine that there are people in um, in the uh, normal version of, of, uh, mm -hmm. of indoor badminton that think that it's not good for you, but I would love to have that discussion with, with all of them because... Uh, uh, I, I think that there's only benefits to, to play outside on the sand. Yeah. Uh, and I know it's difficult. Uh, our players are, ex are experiencing how difficult it is to play long rallies right. in, the, in, the team, in the team format. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to back up and play two matches in a row, for example, um, in 30, 31 degrees. It's challenging. But uh, the games that I've seen today have been a high level, a lot of yeah. rallies, a lot of diving. Mm -hmm. um, I love that they're adding music to the sport of badminton now. I miss that in the... Uh, in the indoor version of the game is that uh, that uh, sort of party atmosphere. So um, oh, it's 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 great. I love it. Okay, how do you see this uh, sport growing in Netherlands specifically? Uh, work. Uh, we clearly have a head start here, right? We have been early adopters of air badminton, and Ian Wright also mentioned about we being extremely uh, open to change and innovative ideas. How do you see us growing in this yeah. field? Well, it's, it's a perfect fit because in the Netherlands, that's what we are. We're innovative. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what they're doing in the sport of volleyball as well. Very innovative events, combining indoor and beach volleyball events, uh, having having events in, in multiple cities at the same time. Um, the great thing is, is that for Air Badminton, is we already have the infrastructure mm -hmm. in terms of sand courts in the Netherlands through the sport of, of beach volleyball. And those beach volleyball accommodations, they're not all full. So actually, there is room to have uh, another sport such as... Um, such as air badminton so uh yeah and it's a, it's a small country so it's easy to arrange for example an air badminton national tour you only have to drive one and a half hours uh, maximum to, to to play in such a tour right so uh, actually we have Ready all of the play. infrastructure already mm -hmm. um we have a lot of a lot of uh, normal badminton clubs around i think it will be fantastic if if the badminton clubs will start to embrace air badminton and offer a 12-month program rather than just a winter program um, which also offers you opportunities to get new members into your sport. People that maybe are playing hockey or football in the, in the winter, mm -hmm. but they want to play a, an outdoor version in the summer. Mm -hmm. And so you get new members into your club as well. Uh, and you call them Air Badminton members, for example. So that can expand your membership base. Mm -hmm. I, 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 just, I just see that this is a win-win-win for, right. for the whole sport of badminton, right. not just in the Netherlands, but uh, throughout the whole world. How do you? Uh, uh, what message would you like to send to uh, uh, you know people who believe that this is probably not a winter thing? It's more of a summer thing to be played with family on the beach. Uh, so how do we embrace badminton, especially in the colder countries in the Western world, uh, when they are going through their winter period? Yeah, well that's funny, you know, because they're, they're, they're in the world it's summer all year round. Yeah. Right. So so there's always a place to go and play. So right. of course I'm Australian. Mm -hmm. Uh, we would play beach volleyball in Europe in, 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 in during our winter. Um, yeah, that, that, that's uh, that's not really an argument. There's a, there's always a place. There's always a place where it's warm. And also, for example, in Europe, mm -hmm. you can go to Spain in the in the winter, and you're getting 22 degrees. So, um, no. Yeah. So. No, that that's uh, that's a fair argument. And uh, okay, uh, excellent, uh, Victor. Uh, you have uh, worked very hard over last at least five years, if not more, in in ensuring that the badminton sport grows. And you have been personally focused on talent development, right? Uh, as a technical director, uh, what are some of the changes that you are seeing in in you know in last few years uh, when it comes to growth of badminton as well as the talent? that we are creating out of Netherlands. Yeah, and I guess, to be honest, I'm, I'm more focused at the very uh, elite end um, mm -hmm. with, our, with our top sport programs. So I'm not that fully involved with talent development, but I, but I, but I am oh. involved to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the key for, for, for badminton growth in the Netherlands is to make sure that we have a really good um, uh, program for talent development. Mm -hmm. um, 
because this it's not an easy sport. Okay, let's ag let's agree that it has. You have to be physically good. You have to be technically good. You have to uh, have to be able to make decisions. Uh, so we need to be able to attract the right types of talents. To be honest, um, and I think that through sp through um, sports such as air badminton, we become also more visible right. um, to attract some of those talents that maybe are now going to other sports to attract those talents to our sport. And that's what we need to be able to sh ensure that we have a sustainable um, performance pathway in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, people are only looking at the at the results of the of the top players, right. and that helps our visibility. And that visibility is what we need to be able to attract young players into our sport. So um, we need to make sure that we're we're always busy making sure that at that young age of, of 10, 11, 12, that we're getting the right talents into the sport, and that they are also having the right uh, development setting at, at that age. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the learnings that you have from other successful countries, maybe like France, Five which has been a, 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 a kind of a recent success in badminton in related terms, uh, or or even uh, Denmark, who has been like a long time proponent and an excellent achiever of uh, results in badminton. What are some of the learnings that you can take or you can help others take in Netherlands so that they can help elevate the level of the the players at a ground level and then help ba badminton at another day? Yeah, I think I think to be honest with you, um, in terms of what happens at the top level, there's not a lot of difference okay. yeah, if, if I look at the national programs. But I'm sure that what those countries uh, are doing better than we are at the moment is facilitating uh, stronger programs for their youth. So that's something that, that I personally think we need to, to focus more on. We have already focused a lot on it, so we've come a long way uh, with our regional training centers. Um, and I hope that in the future that we can uh, develop that even further to make it more accessible um, and to make sure that those youth are getting um, access to, to optimal development uh, training conditions. Right. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us, Victor. Uh, your insights have been very valuable. I'm sure the audience on the audiences on the line have uh, probably learned a thing or two about air badminton as an innovative sport, and uh, as well as you know what's happening in the Netherlands has been pretty insightful. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending time. Thanks, with us. Rohit. All Great right. to see you. Enjoy okay. the event. Bye bye. All right. Out. Eight. Three. Serve is over. Four, eight. Five, eight. Fault. Serve is over. Nine, five. Serve is over. Six, nine. Serve fault call. Good. Serve is over. Ten. Game point six. Out, serve is over. Seven, ten. Out, game. First game won by Czech Republic, eleven, seven. Second game. 
No ball. Play. Serve is over. One love. Yeah, he to serve. Two love. Three love. Double, serve is over. One, three. Out. Serve is over. Four, one. Serve is called fault, foot. Serve is over. Two, four. Three, four. Four, all. Out. Serve is over. Five, four. Serve is over. Five, all. Six, five. Seven, five. Out. Eight, five. Nine, five. Nine five. We follow our own path and make our own choices. We are who we want to be, not who others want to be. Ten game point five. We don't judge you by your political, sexual, or religious preferences. Cause in the end, they're the sinner in the universe. Prepare yourself. Winter is coming. Sin. Serve is over. Six, ten. Out, game. Second game won by Czech Republic, 11, six. Czech Republic leads. Two games to love. All right, we want to ask the, the next teams. 
we meet at the assembly for the next matches Belgium, Bulgaria, Switzerland and Greece. Please be ready for the next match. Czech Republic here in the lead against Azerbaijan. The match will follow up. Third game, love all, play. Surf is over. One love. Serve is over. One all. Out. Serve is over. Two one. Out, three, one. Out, four, one. Five, one. Six, one. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to ask the Team Bulgaria to meet at the assembly camp. Team Bulgaria, please go to the assembly camp. Thank you. Seven, one. Serve is over. Two, seven. Out. Serve is over. Eight, two. Nine, two. Serve is over. Three, nine. Four, nine. Five, nine. Out. 
serve is over. 10, game point, five. Out, serve is over. Six, 10. Serve is over. Game. <laughs> Third game won by Azerbaijan, 11-6. Czech Republic leads two games to one. Fourth game, love all, play. One, love. Two, love. Hold. Serve is over. Seven. Oh, sorry. Uh, that is one, two. Out. Serve is over. Three, one. Out. Four, one. Five, one. Six, one. Seven, one. Out. Serve is over. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Two, thank you for seven. joining the stream uh, from wherever you are in the world. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome again to the AWBG European Qualifier 2023. Uh, my name is Rohit Kulkarni and I'm reporting out of Work and Dam. We just uh, had very interesting interviews, first with Ian Wright, the development director of PWF, and then Victor Amphilov, who, who is a technical director of Badminton Netherlands. And uh, it was um, extremely insightful to know their views around badminton as a sport as well as the growth of air badminton as a concept across the world. Over. The current match that's happening uh, is between 
Czech Republic and Azerbaijan. Uh, it's one of the individual men's triples in Group B, uh, and it will it will be followed up with uh, Switzerland versus Greece uh, in the individual women's triples in a in a few in a few so minutes from now. Nine, As some four. of you may know, the triples event is best of five, and Czech Republic seems to be leading at this stage uh, with two games to one against Azerbaijan. So we'll see how the how this match and shapes up in from now on. The fourth game won by Azerbaijan. Two games all. The sun continues to beat down in the town of Forkentam, uh, as a matter of fact, throughout the Netherlands, uh, with temperature ranging between 30 and 33 degrees Celsius. Uh, perfect day for an outdoor sport like air badminton. Um, uh, kudos to all the people from Badminton Netherlands, uh, the media, uh, who have really worked hard to make it a big event and a successful one so far. So uh, kudos to all of them. And um, the players have been, of course, giving their best, as we saw in some of the games uh, since morning. So all in all, it has been one... Um, party, I guess, uh, not only for our sports enthusiasts and viewers, but also for the players. So as the game stands, it's 2-2. Two -two. Uh, this match has gone right down to the wire. Out. To love. Azerbaijan team looking extremely motivated to do well. Um, seems to have figured out a strategy to to make it work in their favor. They were, as a matter of fact, lagging behind um, in the first few games. However, made a strong comeback in the last couple of games and uh, are leading by 3-0 against Zach Republic. For love. <laughs> Excellent placement. Five love. Wow, that's a very good start to the fifth game from Azerbaijan, 5-0. Um, Every game is played till 11 points, of course, uh, whoever reaches that uh, first and has to be a difference of two um, till the point number 12. If teams continue to match up on point number 12, then whoever wins the 13th point wins the game. Well, after first six points, uh, players are supposed to change the end so that both the teams benefit from the environmental conditions gives a chance for the referees to um, arrange the lines and align the align the tapes well, if at all those are maybe displaced. Azerbaijan seems to be doing really well. I'm sure Zek Republic players would be now thinking hard on what should we be doing differently to ensure that they are making a comeback in the game. To use this pause smartly, let us thank our 
sponsor Sinner, uh, who have been a big supporter of this event. Thank you so much uh, for Six. all our colleagues no. from Sinner. Uh, for right. all the audiences, do check out their uh, product line. Uh, seems to be an exciting one. Um, and uh, we would also like to thank uh, Victor, uh, who has also been an excellent partner to this event. You may also want to check out uh, the products associated with air badminton, like the net and the, the air shuttle. And you can check it all out on Badminton the Launch Shop. Serve is over. Seven Excellent energy one. by Azerbaijan. They continue to extend the lay lead. Um, I keep. I wonder if it's a bit too late for Czech Republic to make a return at this point in time. However, uh, any sport is unpredictable. Nothing ends till the last point. Serve is over. Two seven. A flick serve going a bit serve too far and well judged by Azerbaijan. Eight, two. Four more points for them to win this match against Czech Republic. All three players seem to be extremely focused and uh, well coordinated among each other. Um, good energy, good enthusiasm seen by all three of them. Match point two. Game. All right, that ended pretty fast. Uh, well done to Azerbaijan players uh, of uh, having made such a big comeback and winning this match. Well, we at this point in time, to utilize our time in between the matches intelligently, uh, we have another special guest on our line today. Um, I would like to I would like to thank uh, all the viewers for being tuned in uh, uh, for our live stream. And uh, I'm glad to announce I'm glad to announce that we have Robert de Kaiser, uh, who has been uh, architect of uh, a, a very acclaimed and accredited program called BAMITO in Badminton Netherlands. But Robert has been with Badminton forever and he has so much to talk about Badminton in general. So thank you so much, Robert, for joining us right now. Yes, thank you. All right. Invitation. <laughs> what do you think of the event? It's, it's, it looks fun. A lot of people are having a great time. Yeah, it's amazing. I think uh, Badminton Netherlands uh, did a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, together with Sinner, they uh, made a real nice venue here for Air Badminton and a great uh, qualification uh, match actually so uh, beautiful weather mm -hmm. we're not always used to that <laughs> in the Netherlands uh, but um, yeah it's amazing right right yeah I mean uh, but it, 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 it meant like we, it was one of our lucky days to have this event with yes. such wonderful weather in the Netherlands so yeah. <laughs> one less reason to complain I guess <laughs> yes 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 we always complain in the Netherlands <laughs> about the weather but this time we can't <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Robert, uh, for people who do not know you, there we have audience today worldwide and then a lot of people are probably not as aware about the happenings and some of the recent changes in Bad Netherlands. Why don't you talk us through some of your work in Bad Netherlands and what have been some of the recent uh, positive changes that have happened uh, in this part of the world? Oh, there's so many things to, uh, that we are, I think that we are doing uh, quite well at the moment, but uh, especially now uh, with Bambito, we, uh, we had an, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the prize for participation awards. Um, and I think that's really uh, changing a lot of things in the Netherlands, um, because we can uh, yeah, reach youth uh, much earlier than we are used to, uh, because we do some broad motoric development. Uh, into the program and we are going to uh, even build it up uh, further um, but at the, at the moment we are working with three colors um, 
from four till six years of age is, is the blue color, which is probably more about um, yeah, being on your own and trying to get some skills. And the second part is the, the, the green part, which is uh, introducing uh, the opponent mm -hmm. as a sparring partner. Uh, but um, you play together. So that's the second phase. So from playing alone to playing together. And the third phase is the orange phase. Uh, that is the phase where we introduce sparring and the matches as, the, as we know it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, with uh, using so many different materials um, to keep children uh, moving in different ways and keep them motivated and um, learn by uh, having fun, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way I think and we think uh, is the future. Okay, okay. Talk us through how we um, uh, how we made the evolution of Bami to happen. I'm sure it must have been a lot of years of work which must have gone from your part and maybe your team's part to make it happen, to pr produce the products, to produce the placards, to produce um, innovative, creative ways of engaging kids. So talk us through that journey of Bamito till now. Yeah, I think it all started with um, with the idea that we needed to have a new uh, way of uh, getting to kids that are less, uh, that, that, that were younger. Mm -hmm. So we thought about uh, how can we reach the kids that are four years of age. Yeah. Because in the Netherlands, um, uh, back in the days, it was normal to start at nine years of age to join a club. Mm -hmm. um, and we see in the recent years that um, children are participating in uh, clubs, uh, joining clubs uh, at a mu much younger age, at four years of age. <laughs> Um, so we didn't have a program for it and um, the trainers they keep saying uh, in the beginning uh, yeah you can only join uh, badminton when you're six or seven or eight years of age because mm -hmm. then you can hit it back the right. shuttle um, and it was so much standing still um, so we needed to figure out a way to um, yeah, appeal more to the kids and um, that way we made a uh, the decision to to make a program that was uh, bra broad motoric, mm -hmm. and we hired in a, a creative bureau okay. to say, okay, uh, we need a name, we need a mascot, we uh, we need a uh, yeah something a to, brand. To, uh, to yeah a brand to appeal to kids. So uh, it was really nice to see and how uh, how it worked out, and yeah, they came up with uh, I think a uh, hundred names or so, but Bambito just stood out. Um, because it Ready seems a little play? bit uh, tiny or something, mm -hmm. but it's also cool. Yeah. It's 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 um, so that was the topics we wanted to 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 see in the name and in the in the figure. Right. Uh, it needs to be cool. It needs to be fun. It needs to be a little bit childish. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, to appeal to the kids and say, okay, uh, I want to have um, uh, yeah bambito uh, shirt or something. Right. So that was the first, I think, and from there we started to to, yeah, to write uh, the, the exercises. And mm -hmm. uh, we had um, On my right, in the first uh, first part we had 89 uh, exercises mm -hmm. divided Belgium over the three colors. Um, we put them in a box. Just um, and the next step was that we uh, had some uh, um, education around it. So at the moment, speaking, I think uh, 75 clubs uh, have already followed the, this, uh, this, this training mm -hmm. for, for trainers and uh, say around 200 trainers in general uh, followed it. So uh, that's a way to um, yeah, build the Bamito program and lay it out in, in the country uh, so people can work with it and we have a kind of a little su support system from uh, from the Dutch Feder uh, not the Federation but uh, the government uh, so we can um, give the education for free this uh, clubs can can ask for the education and um, they can uh, receive it for free and we can just uh, address it and um, I think that is a really, really good way of the Dutch government to to implement this new uh, way of thinking. Um, 
So I'm really happy with that one. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, before I forget, congratulations. That's a huge, huge recognition by, by BWF of recognizing the hard work that you and your team have put in over the last several years, perhaps, to make it reality. And we really hope that uh, it, it succeeds in all the clubs. For trainers in Netherlands specifically, or even in maybe Western part of Europe, um, what advice would you give of how such methods like BAMITO help them to educate themselves as well as impart good education to the kids that they are bringing up? Uh, so what the question is uh, how trainers can be developed? Yeah, how, uh, what could be, this, uh, what could be a, a, a glimpse of BAMITO for trainers so that they, ah, oh, you know what, I really want to try this out, see how it is helping my kids. So what is usually your sales pitch, if I may? Uh, uh, well, I think that the main difference between um, the program we have now is is that we are all badminton oriented. Mm -hmm. So every trainer comes in with a badminton background, or they want to do badminton training in, uh, special. And I think, of course, that's really good. Uh, we must keep doing that as well. But um, I think the big asset is is that we can figure a way of the the motoric skills. So uh, trainers in the badminton world need to be aware. Uh, of what about how can we build up uh, more a, a kind of an athlete uh, in order to build up from out of the athlete with broad motoric skills mm -hmm. they can all do all, all turning lunging throwing catching moving in, in every every way so kids need to learn the capabilities of their body that's that's what you need to uh, teach the kids and uh, doing it by a wide variety mm -hmm. of exercises it makes it also fun because I feel that the kids uh, in the present time they have so much pressure um, by the social media and training and training and training and you see if, if you train too much the same sport there's uh, more injuries and there's uh, more uh, people uh, getting away from the sports when they're 15 16 years of age um, but by creating this uh, more wide uh, variety of uh, exercises, we keep them inspired. Every time there's something new, then and every time you do something new, there's something. Um, kids need to figure a way uh, with their body to move, or, but also tactically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much better to. Um, yeah, to imp implement that in your younger years as well. Mm -hmm. So they keep fresh with the, with the same exercise right. at 15 years of age. Right. Because if you start out with the same exercise from eight years and you do it as still when you're 18 years of age, then it's the 1,000th time that you do the same exercise. But right. there's no learning curve mm -hmm. in, the, in this. Then you can do an exercise, but you cannot do uh, something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, besides that. Right, right. And and often, uh, you know, uh, in my conversations with uh, national players in Netherlands and uh, even some of the head coaches that have been working with uh, within my academy, uh, uh, mm. one often argument that I hear is uh, Europeans are more efficient on the court and Asians are just faster on the court. And that's, uh, that is something that I hear very, very often. Uh, do yeah. you think that it's the upbringing of the kids uh, which, uh, which differentiates them in who's faster and who's not or who's more? Uh, or it's just about the DNA that Europeans carry compared to Asians, who are what they have in there? I think it's the second one. The yeah, second it's one? Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's more the nature. And the <laughs> right, nature. okay. Yeah, so it, I think th there's more the nature. The, we see it in different sports as yeah. well. Yeah. If it's uh, short and fast, and then you see Asians thrive. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think they, 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 I don't know for sure what, what, what the difference exactly is. But right. I read somewhere that the reaction time of Asian people is, is also shorter. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, they, those are things we need to cope with as uh, Europeans. Right. In a um, yeah, Asian-dominated <laughs> sports, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so we, we have got to be e efficient and we need to be smart. Right. Um, right. Because we cannot. If you just compare, for instance, Mark Coyle, mm -hmm. he's a Dutch Dutch uh, champion, of course. Mm -hmm. If you compare his pace with Ginting or another name, one of the top players, and Momo, yeah. There's, there, yeah, <laughs> there's so much right. difference. So we need to play a different way. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, 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 Robert, uh, how do you see Bamito growing over the next five to ten years in Netherlands? And how? Uh, what sort of projections do you have of building that revolution in Netherlands to really make badminton great again uh, for yeah. our country? 
Yeah, I have uh, great plans for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to think uh, about a lot of uh, things. Yeah. Uh, and the key part of, of, uh, of this program also is, is that we try to uh, uh, give uh, the children uh, uh, success. So they need to uh, experience the successes. And um, at the moment we have the diplomas, uh, but after, uh, after now four years, I think, uh, the next step will be taken that we will be we are also already busy with uh, developing skills uh, so Bamito skills uh, which kids can do on their own they can train on their own mm -hmm. so you can have a, a short video by scanning a QR code and um, if you uh, join if, yeah if you can do the, the exercise then you get a skill card mm -hmm. uh, and I'm at the moment I'm talking to the University of Delft okay um in order to build uh, more gamification in it mm -hmm. so we we want to gam gamificate uh, bamito and uh, let me explain the gamification <laughs> um i i use the the the, the, the game industry mm -hmm. so the online game industry uh, as an example uh when you when you um have a figure figure that you play in a in a world of uh, of war or something i i'm not that into uh, the the games uh, but they, the kids, I love it because when they score points or they c collect money, or then they can buy stuff, and then they can uh, earn maybe a new badge or a new skill or, for, or a new gun. Or so that's the thing I'm thinking about for Bamito as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing we want to build up. Uh, so we have ten in the Netherlands. We have, uh, yeah, we call it uh, the ten basic motoric skills. Mm -hmm. Um, and in every basic motoric skills, but it's also moving on music mm -hmm. or uh, uh, rhythm. Um, so these skills I want to implement in the program mm -hmm. and uh, make a, um, uh, a tree about uh, what steps you need to take to in order to reach the next accomplishment. Okay. So um, I, in my in my days when I was young, the only game I uh, played online or uh, it was a civilization so when you invented the wheel you yeah. could have horse have, uh, have you could have a chariot or okay a, or, or so this is the same what I want to do with the meter when okay. you um, when you can keep up the shuttle yeah uh, ten times in the air then you own something the next yeah and then you can say okay then you can do the next uh, three options right what you do when you give these options as well mm -hmm. is that you give uh, kids more authority about their own progress mm -hmm. so they can choose out of this 10 uh, motoric skills mm -hmm. and if they love a specific part of the, the the 10 skills right then they can develop that part right so you try to develop them on their own moment in their own way right um, which gives them so much more pleasure right and success mm -hmm. and when they filled it up or say okay i reached my top here maybe i can choose something else oh, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. so you you build up actually a whole part and mm -hmm. uh, in my in my dreams <laughs> at the moment yet is, is so the, the 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 dot on the horizon is is that we have a platform online the kids log in and see their own bamito mm -hmm. and say okay uh, i have now this small record mm -hmm. I need to do throwing and catching. Right. Uh, I need to score, say, 50 points, or or I re need to reach these batches, and then I get a long record. Right. And maybe if I can do it all, I can earn Axelsen's record. <laughs> maybe. So, <laughs> so you see, so that that's the way I want to go, and uh, then you have can create idols. Right. So you implement that as well. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, this is uh, Axelsen's record. Right. The kids, maybe some kids just don't know who Axelsen is, and then they can say, hey, Axelsen, this is kind of a nice figure. And then you have idols, which inspires them to, to do, do more. more. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. that's a very, very uh, innovative uh, kind of uh, technology oriented uh, vision that you have about Bamito, which is very nice to see. Yeah. Uh, for for uh, talking, talking about Dutch clubs, right now um what sort of invest the initial investment do they need to do if they're interested in the bamito program uh, the initial investment is not so much okay. it's it's, uh, it's time because uh, the the first uh uh yeah the the, the 
uh, education mm -hmm. is for free. So they need to invest time and they need to uh, make a plan. Mm -hmm. So in the time yeah. for not only not only visit and uh, enjoy the the education, but also make a plan because that something sometimes I feel is lacking. There's there's not much ambition uh, to say. Um, so if you want to to start up. Uh, uh, you can you, you can you are the greatest example i think in the netherlands because when you did in two years i think you reached how many members we have got 260 members and 100 yeah. kids yeah yeah from <laughs> zero so yeah th th if you have a plan um there's so much possible but yeah. you need to invest time you need to um yeah paint a perfect picture and then then see how how can we reach that goals mm. and uh, how can we do it um because I think if, if you believe and if you want to uh, make the, the sport big again, great, great again, then you need to have some vision. Yeah. And, um, the, 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 I think, I think the, 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 the most people I'm struggling with is, uh, is the financial departments because they want to close up uh, right. the, the booking year. Right. And, and they, they say, OK, this is not possible. Yeah. But you need to make it possible. Yeah, I think, I think you, you need to make the picture and then say, okay, how, what, what do we need to do to get investments? Or I think you are so right. I was listening to a podcast from Wittinghus and uh, Anderson Thompson a few days back, and uh, they mentioned something very, very interesting that uh, people love our sport, but we don't have enough sport marketeers. Exactly. Uh, right, yeah. and and uh, it it resonated that that point resonated with me because uh, it is so important to show them, show people what badminton has to offer. It's not just about financial benefits; it's about health benefits, having a great social life, yeah. you know, building a community around you, and then playing a role in larger interests of the community as well. Uh, yeah. You know, volunteers. Uh, if you are also able to create an exciting environment for volunteers, they are even more pumped up to do the work. Yeah. Right. So uh, you are absolutely right. It's about marketing and ambition. And planning goes hand in hand with that. Yeah, of course. And you mentioned another, uh, another part, which, which I think is very important. It's the social part. Mm -hmm. And we forget about it mm -hmm. too much. And um, what I see in the, in the Netherlands is that people or kids, they, they go to different clubs before they played in the first, first team of their club. Right. Because they can play one level higher in another club or for one year at least mm -hmm. right <laughs> but then they put pressure on themselves and they uh, they must win and you leave your safe environment the club where you started yeah. the club where you have your friends and stuff so i think it's it's really uh, yeah, one shout out to the clubs <laughs> <laughs> to 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 make a, make a social uh, environment for your kids yeah 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 i think i'm i'm personally convinced that uh, programs creative programs like bamito if done well if uh, if they have good backing from the association of course which al which association is already doing that uh, but if there is conviction and good leadership yep. in clubs uh, i think we should have a lot of successful clubs in the country overall instead of only having four clubs in den haag for example right yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, instead we can have much more popularity around the sport as well as higher skill level throughout the country yeah. which i suppose is your final vision over here of too. course of yeah. course yes yes <laughs> yes i think we uh, we are on the, on the good way yeah. we, we've been in uh, yeah in a kind of a deep uh, deep place um, we, 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 uh, we didn't get finance, uh, financed anymore by the, our NOC mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago um, but it took a lot long time to climb out of the out of the, the abyss right so uh, but I think we're we're hitting the right way now again and uh, we uh, what I mentioned at uh, AGM as well is yeah we uh, we uh, have an increase by 10% at the moment uh, in, in comparison to last year. Yeah. So uh, from 30,000 members, mm -hmm. uh, now 33,000. Wow. So um, and and still uh, rising. Yeah. But there's always clubs that uh, that, that are uh, in trouble, and there's the small clubs actually that have more problems, and the bigger clubs are. Actually, now more problem is that we don't have the the space to to play anymore. So uh, yeah. that's that's one of the that's a good problem topics. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, it's <laughs> kind of a luxury problem. But okay. then again, yeah, there's so much w in the Netherlands. Uh, the, uh, yeah, what we do as a federation to 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 the government as well to say okay, we 
the government is saying we want to have a best uh, moving uh, kids of the world and we want everybody participating and my question then to the government is yeah okay but do we have the space for it because uh, we yeah. just don't have enough halls and Netherlands is a small country so yeah yeah uh, well it has good infrastructure but I think if there is yeah. a sport loving country then you also need a lot of infrastructure for yeah, yeah so that's I think we have some very very positives in the Netherlands because every if you want to play a good level yeah uh, your traveling distance is not so big right big right in comparison to other land other yeah. yeah 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 uh, Robert what are some of the other initiatives that you're involved within Badminton currently uh, yeah we have as well which is also helping us very well is, is the yeah, I'll translate it is try badminton dot now mm -hmm. um, which is a yeah which is a, 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 a program for for clubs to to try to invite people um, from all over the country to play badminton mm -hmm. uh, for 10 weeks so you get uh, to, uh, we all, all uh, do the same offer as all joining clubs have the same offer for 25 euros you can join which is in the Netherlands really nothing right um, and then you can have uh, 10 uh, 10 weeks of practice mm -hmm. uh, which we uh, already prescribed for the for the trainers but up for you to to do it or uh, do it your own way of course right. but we try to help trainers and clubs and the volunteers to to have a program mm -hmm. uh, of 10 lessons okay um which yeah is really successful so last year we have i think we have now have for um, 430 uh clubs in the wow. netherlands and uh last year 20 if uh, 218 clubs joined this program fantastic yeah, so it's it's uh, it's a it's a program which uh, we uh, order flyers and posters uh, for for clubs. Mm -hmm. We have just one flyer for everyone mm -hmm. uh, with a QR code which makes you land on a website. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when you have when you uh, come on this website, then you can fill in the place you want to play badminton, mm -hmm. and then it says, okay, I have these options for you. Okay, and every club can fill in their own uh, time frame they have trainings mm -hmm. um, uh, so people can see okay uh, this doesn't fit me or this does this does fit, fit me, me yeah um, and then we need to uh, yeah then I need to join here right or, yeah. right um, which is really successful and I think uh, last year we had more than two two thousand uh, people joining this program mm -hmm. and um, almost 50% is, is staying at the club. So, wow, um, that's a good ratio. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, and I think one of the key uh, things is uh, that normally they come in uh, one by one. Yeah. Uh, let's say in week 31, uh, someone enters the hall and says, hey, I, uh, I'm interested in playing badminton and right. then you're alone. Yeah. And nobody, if everybody is playing with the, the, all the, the people they know, right. and it's really hard to, to join the club actually. Indeed. Uh, and with this program, you have a group of, say, 10 people. Mm -hmm. They are training together, they are started together, and they know each other from the start. start yeah, yeah. Uh, and the next step is that, th that you integrate them in the club. Right. So we, we support clubs doing that by okay. giving some ideas. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's one of the... the yeah. Do you also yeah. see a need of... There are clubs who are doing well because of their strength, and there are clubs who are maybe struggling a bit because th they have less number of members or it's a small village and they, they are not able to attract members so um, uh, how do you also keep the club administration excited about doing more and more because it's often called a thankless job uh, you know the four sitters I, I mean to say the chairman and yeah. the treasurers and the secretaries they're doing it for the love of the game right yeah. but for for those people who don't expect any financial returns how do you keep them excited about you know keeping on doing the work and maybe also creating some returns for them yeah but that's a really tough question yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to answer I would really love it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, what I say I try to inspire people and I right. try to I think it's 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 very important that we keep yeah. uh, sharing successes yeah and when people have questions about it then just be open right uh, for example Last year, we had an interview with uh, one club was really in trouble, mm -hmm. 
and they uh, combined actually the um, uh, the, pro uh, the tri badminton dot now mm -hmm. with Bamito. Okay. Because we have in within the program of Bamito we have a f what's called a fun day, mm -hmm. um, and they implemented it actually uh, the, the the day before or the or the week before uh, tri badminton dot now mm -hmm. entered. They implemented it uh, with the schools and right. they invited uh, kids through schools mm -hmm. and PA teachers, um, which uh, came to 85 wow. kids, new kids joining this fun day. And from out of that, I, I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe it was 45 kids that tr uh, joined Tri Badminton. Right. And now there's five, 25 that are a member of the club. So yeah. in, in just one month, actually. Yeah. So for, for, for all the viewers on the line who are joining across the world, let me tell you that 85 is a big number in Netherlands because, you know, some of the countries might say, oh, 85 is not a big deal. It's like, uh, yeah. but in Netherlands, for a country which has been dominated by maybe soccer or hockey yeah. and stuff, getting 85 kids in badminton is a big achievement. So uh, to what Robert is saying, it's really important to look at uh, the population of a country, what are the other sports being dominant in that country, and then what is badminton achieving out of that whole competition. So Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. So, but you're right. And uh, we had a talk uh, before uh, offline in Eindhoven as well, uh, because your program with the with the with the schools is also yeah. pretty pretty good. Yeah. And, um, so some of the stuff is it's yeah not too hard to think uh, when you think about it. Yeah. But you need to do it. You need right. to be uh, be open. You need to uh, communication is is key. Yeah. And you yeah. need to. That's why I say you have a vision. Yeah. You need to have it beforehand. Right. <laughs> so you want, you want to, and this this club was actually baffled by the result because they, they were, okay, well, what yeah. happened here? Yeah. Uh, but they do, did a real good job by uh, adding Facebook and, and paying Facebook to, to, to target the, the parents of the kids. Uh, and they uh, invited all the schools in in uh, in their in their city, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, all the PA teachers d uh, they they handed out the the, the, flyers. the flyers. Yeah, and yeah, then if you put in this this um, effort, effort, yeah, then then it will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, right. Uh, I think I was probably one of the first beneficiaries of Bamito when we met for the first time in Eindhoven. But uh, you should visit Eindhoven. I think a lot has yeah, changed yeah. over it there. Was, and uh, yeah. we are coming for Den Haag soon, on, <laughs> soon yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But I want to thank you for spending time with us. Yes, uh, well yeah, it's always a pleasure knowing your uh, vision, uh, a lot of hard work that you're doing. But thank you for all the commitment and hard work that you're doing for badminton in general. Yes, thank you as well. Thank you. All right, okay. Fun. Enjoy the event. Yes, yeah? thank you. Right. Right. All right. Th well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Robert De Kaiser, um, and uh, it was extremely insightful to know uh, a lot of good work that he has been doing in Netherlands, especially. Uh, I'm sure uh, countries across Europe or maybe even beyond are taking a note of the recent uh, participation award that Badminton Netherland won for their original concept of Bamito. Uh, if you are interested, do check out the website of Badminton Netherland to see what this is all about, how it can potentially help you. And do not hesitate to just contact somebody from Badminton Netherland. I'm sure you'll find contact details on the website, as well as uh, you might come up with new collaboration opportunities. Uh, well, having said that, uh, we are back to badminton right now. The match going on between uh, Denmark and Belgium, uh, which happens to be the individual men's triples in Group B. The first set happening. We will soon continue with uh, commentary for the matches uh, after, a, after a brief break. So stay tuned, enjoy the match. Uh, uh, there are a lot of matches lined up for the day. And we will soon be joining you for continuing the commentary piece. Thank you. Seven, six. Out. That was over. Seven all.
Service over. Eight, seven. Yeah, sure. Service over. Eight, oh. Out. Ten. Game point. Eight. Service over. Nine. Ten. Ten. Oh. Yes. And maximum 13. So now we go to 12. <laughs> 11, 10. Fault. Two times. Service over. 11, all. Twelve game point eleven. Out. That was over. Twelve all. Yes. Game. First game won by Denmark, 2nd game level play out one left fault that was over one all Was over. Two one. That was over. 
two. Oh. Out. Three, two. Four, two. Seven is over. Three, four. Four. Oh. Four. Seven is over. Five, four. Seven's over. Five. Oh. Out. Six. Five. Seven's over. Six. Oh. Out. Seven's over. Seven. Nine, six. Oh, seven's over. Seven, nine. Seven's over. Ten. Game point. Seven. Game. Second game won by Denmark, 11 7. This is the final game of match three hour of match one. Second to play. The club total is here 70 points. So to win triple, you would have to make this Germany, Bulgaria, Denmark, and Greece. So one more try. Total wins triple. Let's see if Greece is ready at the 70 points. Germany, Bulgaria, Denmark, and Greece. Third game, level play. Seven's over. One left. Out. Seven's over. One. Oh.
two, one. Sorry, sorry. Restore the line, please. You stepped on the line. Please pull it back. Thank you. Out. That was over. Two all. Out. That was over. Three, two. That was over. Three all. That was over. Four, three. That was over. Four all. It's him serving. You can serve. Four all. Time's over. Five, four. Colors push. Out. Six, four. Time's over. Five, six. Time's over. Seven, five. Out. Eight, five. Nine, five. Ten, match point, five. Game. Match won by Denmark, 13-12, 11 11 11-7, 11 11-5. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for the two playing teams in second place, Belgium, and the winners of this match, Denmark! <laughs> we ask our next uh, contestants to be ready for the Women's triples, Germany, Bulgaria, Denmark, and Greece.
Since 1996, when we were founded, we have been explorers who are looking for inspiration, excitement, challenges, and magical moments that arouse our endless curiosity. It is in our Dutch blood. So when the cold wind blows and leaves start to fall, when the cooler and shorter days tell us summertime has ended, and the nights become long, cold, crystal clear, that's the moment we pack our bags and go. Our destination, wherever the road takes us. Why? Because we're curious. We follow our own path and make our own choices. We are who we want to be, not who others want to see. We don't judge you by your political, sexual, or religious preferences. Cause in the end, there's a sinner in all of us. Prepare yourself, winter is coming. Sinner, S-I-M. Yes, that was here, also the on the right side was the next game, women's triples, Denmark versus Greece, and the toss is being made right now. For Team Denmark, we have Iri Irina Amalie Anderson, Iben Bergstein, and Anna Fluxa. For Team Greece, Melina Maria, Anna Steele, Theodora Liaku, and Alkisti uh, Varsiliga Patsagalsi. Ready to play? All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. This is Rohit Kulkarni again from Work and Dam in the Netherlands. Well, we are all gearing up for the next match between Denmark and Greece, uh, which happens to be individual women's triples match in the group B. It's being played on the first uh, court, if you will, in the Beach Sport Club in Work and Dam. Uh, the ladies look uh, uh, quite prepared for getting the match started uh, for obvious reasons it shouldn't take too much too long to uh, to do your warm-up it's uh, that kind of weather in Netherlands which is a bliss uh, we are continuing to have um, temperatures in the range of 30 degrees Celsius and uh, that's a perfect day for air badminton Greece. looks like they are all set to commence the match I would like to welcome all of you on the uh, on the YouTube stream, uh, thanks for joining in. Um, yes, and uh, some comments are also flowing. That's great to see. Uh, uh, someone, Andreas, saying that the shuttle is very hard to see. Yep, Andreas, we can totally 
um, imagine that it's because uh, it's quite bright uh, during the day and outside of course and for from viewership point of view it can be a bit challenging to notice or keep a track of the shuttle traveling between the two sides so that's a good observation it's a innovative concept launched by BWF uh, very well supported by its uh, uh, by its members uh, it has been taking off uh, quite well in the Netherlands lately and uh, we are having good amount of interest in uh, pursuing that as a excellent idea uh, for continuing the growth of badminton it's always nice to see a smile on players faces uh, like we do in uh, in case of uh, Danish women players there. Uh, all the participants across all the countries seem to be having a lot of fun, not only on the on the field but also uh, outside of the field with their making new friends, meeting with new uh, functionaries within BWF, uh, exchanging knowledge with each other. Most of these players are, of course, have been uh, players of conventional badminton in indoor sport halls or courts. So it is a change for them uh, to adapt to the environmental conditions, to the uh, to the to the new shuttle. Working in a concept like triples, where they are playing with two partners at the same time. So all in all, a fantastic uh, event uh, happening here. Denmark leading with five to two. One thing that has been extremely common across all the players is uh, them them enjoying every single moment that they are in here in Netherlands. Well, it might seem uh, that the game sometimes is perceivably slower than what you see on a conventional badminton field. However, uh, let me tell you, it's equally taxing for these players because they are some of the top players in their own countries. Uh, they have been very good performers in the uh, in the traditional badminton setting, but uh, playing on a beach in the sand in a competitive environment is a whole new ball game altogether. There are several countries known to use sand as a way to uh, conduct their trainings, uh, especially for the aspiring and high potential talent in their country. So um, this being perceived as one of the summer sports is only one part of the equation. It might actually help the potential aspiring players to also develop their skill sets and strengthen their legs uh, for all you know. So all in all is a great uh, a compliment to the traditional badminton and uh, who knows in a few years from now it might actually evolve to be its own sport and uh, players preparing hard to ensure that they are earning the accolades and the uh, laurels for their country. Excellent placement by Greece. Very well, good coordination. Even, even though Denmark is leading by a comfortable difference of 10 to 6, uh, Greece is still en ensuring that they are having fun. Beautiful kill by Greece. You do see some um, experience from some of the countries of having played this sport for a while uh, compared to some of the other European countries. Uh, you tend to notice that they are uh, probably more evolved in terms of their coordination, uh, understanding with their partners, and uh, 
how to handle potential confusion on the field, uh, which has been quite noticeable in the case of France, who are extremely good in uh, having a good understanding among each other, which indicated that they have practiced a lot uh, of the sport and they took it very seriously. All right, it's uh, going quite close uh, in terms of uh, the scores. Well, and the first game is uh, f goes for Denmark. Uh, well played, ladies. Um, they will now be changing sides. And uh, let's see how the second one goes. As we all know, it is a best of five format where you got to win at least three. Who reaches the 11 points first happens to be the winner of the game. Um, Unless, of course, uh, it's a tie at 12 points and whoever wins the 13th point ends up winning the game. One common aspect that we have been seeing and, uh, you know, uh, someone who has been seeing all these matches from the morning, one, uh, one thing that has stuck with me is how much fun are these players having? Uh, it might not appear that way for someone who's sitting behind a screen perhaps or watching their uh, matches on YouTube or on television. However, uh, players over here are having an absolute ball of a time uh, with good weather conditions, a new concept of badminton. Uh, so that goes to show that most of them are willing to embrace innovation in the sport as well as trying to make best use of the opportunity, which is really good to see.
good judgment just outside the court and uh, it is uh, uh, yeah it's been a nice game so far going really close between Greece and Denmark didn't quite time that jump very well uh, the Danish uh, female player Well, the shots that typically look quite easy on a normal badminton court uh, may appear <laughs> to be quite difficult on a on a sand beach. Uh, but that's the nature of the game. You just got to get used to the new conditions. Uh, what you're stepping on on a on a constantly moving ground, I guess, and um, uh, the wind speed as well as direction, which makes it very interesting as a sport because you have to constantly adapt to what what the weather throws at you so that's the reason why you see you know it's players are not probably as stressed about the whole sport as we typically see at a very high level of competition uh, they seem to have a lot of fun excellent kill by Denmark and that gives them the second game as well 12-10 that's a that is a close one well let me use that opportunity to Thank our sponsor, Sinner. Do check out their products on sinner.eu. Uh, they do have some really nice products, especially in the uh, sports goggles. Uh, and you, you would find a lot of variety in what they have to offer. So do check out their website, sinner.eu. We had a very interesting day so far. Uh, we got a chance to have an interview with the uh, uh, Director of Development of BWF, Ian Wright. We also got a chance to speak with uh, Technical Director of Badminton Netherlands, Victor Amphilov, and um, of course, Robert de Kaiser, the architect of BAMITO program in the Netherlands, which recently won BWF Participation Award in Malaysia. Uh, so a lot of good things happening in our sport. and. Um, it's been very interesting to listen to their insights and how they see badminton as a sport continue growing in the future as well. Huh.
All right, we are in the group B of women's triples event where Denmark and Greece are competing currently. Um, Switzerland and Greece already had a match together in which Switzerland won the game or rather won the match. The this is the second match happening in the women's triples category of Group B. And we we are still left with almost six matches to complete during the day. Mm. There's a lot of hard work for the, uh, the media man, uh, cameraman, who was trying to do his best in ensuring that he's capturing all the crucial moments and uh, um, broadcasting all this action happening uh, to the rest of the world. So kudos to the cameraman as well as the people who are uh, handling the audio uh, section of this whole event. They're keeping the vibe on with good music and ensuring that all the people present here are having a great time. All right, Denmark is on a cusp of victory here uh, with 10-4. Excellent placement, and then that marks the victory for Denmark in, well, they've got some way of celebrating there. So 3-0, uh, that's a comprehensive win against Greece, and they sure seem to have a lot of fun there. That probably takes Denmark off at top of the pool, uh, and the pool contains Switzerland, Netherlands, Denmark, and Greece. A lot of matches yet to happen throughout the day, so we are in for a lot of fun. So stay tuned. Next match. We'll start in a few minutes. And that's, that's going to happen between Netherlands and Czech Republic, the men's triples group B. Let's take a quick break here. Ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere. Uh, we are in for a treat for all the followers online who are supporting the Dutch team, um, as well as uh, matches at the court number one, France versus Switzerland. Court number two, Netherlands, Czech Republic. Netherlands versus Czech Republic. And who knows, we might have some more special guest for all of you to listen in and uh, learn from. We are working on it or maybe also some of the players. So stay tuned, enjoy your time and if at all you have any comments and feedback and what all would you like to know more about Air Badminton, do not hesitate to post that in the in the YouTube chat. We will be keeping an eye on it, especially during the games or during the uh, between the matches. Uh, so always nice to hear the what viewers think about the sport. Uh, how how should people help embrace it, and what does it do for overall badminton community? All right, stay tuned, guys.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the first, uh, the second uh, match here, um, the next match I have to say, on court one, France versus uh, Switzerland. And this lady from France, uh, she really loves her music, eh? <laughs> How about the people from Switzerland? Are you okay on the bench? Perfect. All right, the supporters, are you ready for this match? Please make some noise for France versus Switzerland.
All right. Well, we are back again after a small break. There is no stoppage to the matches. So while commentators were on a break, uh, that didn't stop the teams from getting started with their match between France and Switzerland. And France to be doing seems to be doing exceedingly well with 8-1 in the first set. It's almost uh, <clears throat> 4 o'clock in the Netherlands, 12 minutes to go for 4. And uh, there is a cool breeze uh, blowing through the arena over here, uh, which will also be a bit more um, which will be a bit more soothing for the players. Uh, you can actually see the, the effect of wind um, when you are sitting perpendicular to the the badminton court here, uh, you you really see the 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 shuttle swirling and then deviating from its uh, expected trajectory uh, due to the effect of the wind. And uh, although it may not be as visible uh, for for the viewers on YouTube of how the shuttle is traveling, it is quite evident that um, it. It does get affected by the wind along with. So harder the wind, then it's more difficult for them to uh, predict and then uh, ensure that they're hitting an effective shot at the end of it. But that said, uh, clearly France were the better team in the first game with uh, them securing the, f the first set with 11-4. A few highlights from the first game. Starting the next game, our contestants, we don't have uh, a lot of supporters, but the supporters that are here can make a lot of noise. Please make some noise. France versus Switzerland. All right, into the second game already. It would be interesting to inquire with some of the players to see which, uh, what tension do they use on the strings. Uh, it is generally regarded to use low tension to absorb the the weight of the shuttle and also make your strings and racket a bit more durable while playing with such a heavy shuttle. However, we would try to catch hold of some players uh, whenever we can over today and tomorrow to see what are the, what have been their experiences of using the right gear and the right tension in strings to hit the air shuttle effectively. But if anybody from the audiences or anyone, any of the listeners on the YouTube already have got an idea, they have experience of playing air badminton, then do not hesitate to share your knowledge and help the whole community grow.
Das, the scores are pretty much neck to neck. Excellent smash by French team. And um, the second set seemed to be a bit more competitive in nature, uh, with Switzerland also uh, rethinking the strategy around uh, scoring point against French. Um, as you can see, it's not exactly that easy to predict the direction in which, in which Shuttle is going to move, uh, partly due to the wind blowing across the uh, across the arena. But that's uh, that's the difficult part and challenging part of the game that you it, it kind of keeps you active all the time and uh, also helps you or other challenges you to anticipate the trajectory of the shuttle to ensure a smooth return or an effective return. And mind you, these players that you are seeing, they are probably one of the one of the best in their own countries when it comes to conventional badminton, uh, playing in a sport hall. But uh, again, beach badminton or air badminton is a whole new game and hand-eye coordination can only be effective uh, uh, if you have uh, also a good understanding of how to coordinate among yourself and your partner um, as well as a good understanding of uh, the dynamics as well as the area of the badminton field that you need to cover. And you can also dive safely without being much worried about the injury part, <laughs> as you can see in that case. Excellent kill by Switzerland. Uh, they're really turning it on. And ex that's an excellent comeback by Switzerland to uh, equalize the number of games. Uh, now, it's as it stands, it's 1-1 after France winning the first game quite comprehensively. It does look like we have a pretty good competition on our hands. Now the teams, uh, the viewers are watching the the highlights, of course, of the second game. However, the teams must be strategizing what is working for them, what is not. I'm sure this event, a fantastic one so far, has been a very good educational experience for uh, all the participating players. Uh, what makes it quite unique is a lot of players might be playing at such a high profile uh, and a new sport uh, for the first time. So I'm sure they're learning from each other. Uh, they're sharing information of how do they approach uh, a, a particular game and strategize. So it's, it's more than the fun part. I would value that the learning that comes along with um, working on a new sport and new skills. All right, looks like French and Swiss are ready to commence the third game. Uh, umpires and referees look ready, so Let's get on with it. Called out by the referee.
excellent punch lift if i may call it that way it's probably a lift more than a punch clear but uh, yeah that that was effective enough and then a french a bit indecisive about where it's going to land eventually French are turning on the heat. But the Swiss are. Excuse me. The beauty of this sport lies in its accessibility. Um, often in our beloved sport of badminton, we are confined by infrastructure, namely sport halls and um, you know, getting a fair chance to play every week or rather even every day. However, air badminton opens up a lot of new possibilities for badminton enthusiasts and it's a fantastic game for promoting healthy lifestyle as well without being constrained and restricted by availability of sport halls. Um, it doesn't have to be a beach all the time ev even if you are able to find spacious enough public spaces where you could just put up the lines, get the air badminton net and get started with your kids. Uh, who knows, they might start loving it and eventually that might prompt them to start loving the sport in its broad sense. So it does open up a lot of new opportunities for uh, people to have fun as well as um, stay connected to the sport of badminton. Air Badminton uh, wing of Badminton Netherlands started this initiative called Let's Play Net um, where they have started installing hard nets uh, made of metal where everyone in a particular neighborhood can just come and start knocking the shuttle without really need to reserve halls or take a membership of a club uh, and still enjoy the sport. Uh, that's what I say. There, there are a lot of innovations that can take place. However, people have to be ready to embrace it and uh, still stay connected to the sport. The third game going uh, quite neck to neck for France and Switzerland with 5-5 for each. Brilliant smash by French, killing the killing the rally and uh, securing a point for themselves, taking a steady and a small lead in the third game. French have been here a bit on more, they have been more in attacking mindset over the last four or five points, um, which have yielded returns for them. Still maintaining a small and slender lead of two in the third game. Okay, uh, looks like the, the tapes uh, demarcating the area weren't straight and that has led to point being replayed.
intention to deceive uh, the shuttle, uh, unfortunately hitting the net. Now, Switzerland uh, is coming back slowly and steadily. Brilliant drop shot by French. One point to go to secure the third set, third game. For all viewers on the line, tell us what you like about this game. And would you be interested in trying a dot once to see if that's something that fascinates you as well? Excellent judgment by French again and securing the third game for themselves. Yes, and we'd like to ask uh, the next teams for the next matches to get ready and start making yourselves ready. These are the teams for the men's triples also, Greece, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan and Belgium. So the teams, men's triples, Greece, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan and Belgium, please get ready for your next match. The next game here is going to be played between Azerbaijan and Belgium on the court that is being telecasted on YouTube after this, uh, after the current game between France and Switzerland finishes. France is number one seeded in the men's triples format, uh, while Netherlands is number two. Netherlands coincident is also playing on the other uh, beach court, um, which is not being telecasted, unfortunately. We, I'm sure we will soon come to know the results as well of, from that game. All right, Switzerland making a good start for the fourth game of the match. Uh, good judgment by Swiss players, extending that lead to five to one.
excellent punch clear, which uh, clearly deceived the French players over there. Uh, Switzerland is kind of running away with this game with 7-2 lead. And uh, they seem to be quite keen on ensuring that they secure the fourth game and take it to the, the ultimate game to determine the winner. Extremely attack attacking mindset. Well, two more points to go for Switzerland to secure the th the second game for themselves. Excellent drop by Swiss players. They sure look pumped up. Tennis to five. Brilliant drop shot again by Switzerland. Very tactical play. Um, keeping the neutral rally on as much as possible and then waiting for French to move back a bit only to drop and finish the rally. Uh, excellent strategy by uh, Switzerland uh, taking their score uh, to also 2-2 along with French. Uh, now we go to the last game of the match uh, to determine who's going to emerge as a winner. One thing that is noticeable is the players still have the same amount of passion to win every single game as they would typically have in a conventional badminton match. Uh, so it's, it's sure a change for viewership uh, when it comes to watching an air badminton match and then starting to compare that with uh, ongoing Singapore Open, for example. However, uh, rest is assured that these players, who are also happen to be some serious talent for their own countries, uh, seem to have a great time playing beach badminton and enjoying the opportunity to the fullest. And I would urge all of you to uh, take some time, drop those lines, put up a net, and then try air badminton as well to see how, if you're liking it. Could be a great sport for the whole family to enjoy on a summer vacation. The rest of the team members of both the countries, France and Switzerland, they are cheering and supporting for their teammates uh, playing in this match. Excellent placement by France, right in the middle of the two players, uh, thereby helping create a bit of confusion there.
Wow, Swiss trying to finish the rally, but instead uh, colliding against each other. That was an easy point there for Swiss, but couldn't really convert it. Instead, ended up awarding one point to French, and now the lead goes to three to zero. French are kind of racing in the fifth game, and uh, Swiss players better pull it back fast before it gets too late for them to recover from. Good judgment by Swiss players, thereby opening their account in the fifth game. French look certainly a bit more composed in the fifth game. Uh, they know exactly what's happening. They are trying to play with uh, positioning of Swiss players uh, and last shot was a very good example of using the court space really well, having a good spatial awareness to put the shuttle in. At six points, as we know, uh, the courts are changed. Uh, in the individual men's triples games, it's only the fifth game in which the um, the courts are changed, and uh, that gives uh, a bit of fairness to both the teams to work with the existing weather conditions. French are clearly leading over here, so Switzerland may have to adopt a different strategy to pull it all back and then create a chance for themselves in the last and deciding game of this match. Six, one, Excellent drive at the French player's body which uh, cramped him up for room and thereby earned one point for Switzerland. Excellent uh, drop again. Well, it sure seems like French are now clear favorites to win this match. A flat game, that one. Um, trading shuttles uh, very fast among themselves. Uh, the rally eventually ending up in favor of Swiss. Wow, two points away from the glory here. French uh, men's triples team, 9-3, clear favorites to win this uh, contest. Let's see if Switzerland is able to pull a miracle out. Match point for France after a well fought out five gamer match. It's match point for France. They, uh, it's a 
Well, that's some attacking badminton by Switzerland. They are not giving up. Fighting till the last moment. Good to see. Beautiful placement by Swiss players. 6-10. Are we in here for surprise? Good judgment by Switzerland. Wow, they three consecutive points for them. Uh, clearing the deficit by three points and uh, still uh, three match points for France here. That's sad. It was a perfect uh, place to play the rally. Unfortunately, hit a bit too too strong and uh, took the shuttle out of the of the court. Uh, congratulations to France. They played really well in the third set, even though there was, I'm sure there were a few nervous moments for them uh, while finishing off that game. Uh, however, well, also well fought to Switzerland for giving their best fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this exciting match between France and Switzerland in the individual men's triples event. The next, the next event on the line over here is... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we applaud for Switzerland and of course our winner of the match, France. Azerbaijan versus Belgium which will start in a few minutes from now. So stay tuned, do not go anywhere. Uh, to get to the meeting uh, point. Greece, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan, and Belgium. So men's triples, Greece, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan, and Belgium. Please go to the meeting. We'll continue with the individual men's triples event in Group B. We already saw Azerbaijan play really well in their first uh, game against uh, Zek Republic. Uh, they were really having a lot of fun. Uh, happy faces, always good to see, right? And uh, hope to see the same performance and same attitude by all the, by both the teams. We'll take a small break uh, f while the players uh, prepare themselves for the upcoming match, and we'll soon resume the commentary as the match starts. Stay tuned, guys.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this match. Please make some noise for Azerbaijan and Belgium. All right, we are back for the next individual men's event between Azerbaijan and Belgium. Uh, Azerbaijan sure seems to have uh, taken a healthy lead already in the first game. And uh, with 8-2, a uh, difference of 6 points. Azerbaijan was very impressive in the first game that they played earlier in the day. Let me take that opportunity to thank our sponsor, Sinner. Do check out their products. Uh, they've got a pretty cool summer range uh, uh, published on their website, sinners.eu. And also Victor, who has been a very good partner for Badminton Netherlands and promoting its initiatives. We had some extremely competitive matches uh, during the day so far. Uh, some of the countries like France, Denmark, Netherlands, Germany have been all performing really well. Uh, this is uh, a match happening between Belgium and Azerbaijan in the Group B of Individuals Men's Triples event. Well, that ended quite fast. Azerbaijan has secured the first game for itself uh, with 11-6. A score I'm sure Belgium would, Belgium would be looking for to change that 
status in the second game and make sure that they have a good chance for themselves. Judgment by Azerbaijan. Again, good judgment. Good smash, having a good spatial awareness where the players were standing and hitting right at the body. Good technique. I'm sure this event has been a pretty educational one for all the players who are playing here. Uh, I'm sure they are learning from each other. Some of the countries like Netherlands and France who have been playing this for a few years, they probably would have accumulated more experience in the tactics and putting a strategy together on how to uh, score effectively. So. Other countries who may or may not have as much experience uh, would have learned from this experience and playing with good players in the Europe. Good judgment. Azerbaijan maintaining a very good lead uh, against Belgium and thereby uh, again favorites to win the second game as well in this match. Good judgment by the Belgian receivers. Well, uh, as I mentioned before, it might not be that intuitive to understand a trajectory of badminton shuttle when you're watching the stream on YouTube. However, when you experience it for yourself or are standing perpendicular to the court itself, uh, you do notice that uh, wind plays a pretty important part in the trajectory of the shuttle. And that's probably the challenging part for the players uh, because these players, I'm sure, have been excellent players indoors in, in conventional sense of badminton. However, in air badminton, it uh, presents new dynamics and they have to 
they have to get used to the weather conditions as well, which makes it more interesting and challenging. BWF has invested steadily into developing a uh, air shuttle, which is um, more suitable, durable, and ideal for um, having interesting air badminton concept implemented. And uh, as I hear it, this is probably the one of several prototypes and then the, uh, the recently released air shuttle, which has been implemented and used in the official tournaments like this one. The rules of this game have also been implemented, keeping in mind uh, the other constraints as the sand being used as well as the area to be covered. Uh, the dead zone, which is the area of two meters on either side of the net, uh, also encourages keeping more rallies on uh, so that the players don't have to run too much in a very difficult uh, surface as sand, sand beach. And they do have a good chance of keeping a good rally on and uh, also keep it interesting for the audiences watching them all. Well, while we are waiting for the game, the third game to restart, let's take a quick look on what's happening in Singapore no, Open. The day must have ended in Singapore, uh, which, uh, where semi-finals of Singapore Open, KFF Singapore Open 2023 took place. As it seems in uh, women's singles, the final will be played between Akane Yamaguchi from Japan and An Young from Korea. Akane Yamaguchi defeated Shen Yufei from China in three sets, while An Young defeated Taisu Ying in two straight games, which is a fantastic achievement. In men's singles, Anderson Thompson defeated Kodai Narauka from Japan in three sets, uh, all three sets being closely fought. Uh, while uh, Anthony Sinusuka Ginting from Indonesia defeated Kunlabat Vidicharan from Thailand in uh, in three sets. However, Vidicharan looks like he retired in the third game, presumably due to an injury. All right, back to air badminton in Netherlands, in Werkendam. Uh, Azerbaijan is uh, on the cusp of victory here, uh, winning two sets very easily and uh, leading in the third game with three points to zero. Uh, request to change the shuttle. Looks like it's overused. You don't see that. Clearly, it means that it's more durable. Uh, the badminton lovers are usually accustomed to having the shuttles changed. Uh, very often in high profile event, but uh, we have hardly seen air shuttle being changed very often, which means, uh, which is a good indicator of its durability, as well as player satisfaction of it working, as well as behaving as expected. Uh, Belgium losing their plot in the third game uh, altogether. 7-0 is uh, probably beyond the point of return for them. Um, Azerbaijan, of course, has been playing very impressively. However, Belgium just seem that they are they are a bit down with their overall performance and uh, <laughs> that was a bit of a funny moment. Uh, a clear way to win the shuttle, but over committing there. Okay. 
interesting comments on the YouTube chat. Thank you so much for your feedback. Tell us how can we uh, make it more interesting. Um, badminton, as we know, it's extremely addictive for everyone who plays it. Uh, almost everyone loves badminton, right? Uh, the moment you pick up a racket. And air badminton also s promises to be uh, a very promising sport uh, for one holding the racket. But it is a new sport and uh, the world is discovering it. A lot of countries uh, have committed to participate in the Bali, where the championships will take place in the month of August of this year, in a couple of months. And there are some high profile names also visiting that event. So who knows, uh, it would be interesting to hear uh, some of the experienced players expressing their opinions about air badminton and how can it uh, help recreational badminton in general as well as help our beloved sport grow. Well, Belgium, Belgians are clearly a bit frustrated with their overall performance in this game, uh, which was uh, quite evident right over there. Uh, two more points to go for Azerbaijan to secure the victory in this match. They don't mind taking a few more minutes to finish the victory. Well, and we arrive to the match point between Azerbaijan and Belgium. Azerbaijan clear and um, deserving winners of this match. They have really played well right from the beginning. A flick serve and uh, a misunderstanding between two players from Azerbaijan of who's going to take the shuttle. What's happening with Singapore Open? Well, we'll try to recap the scores of Singapore Open, the semifinals which took place uh, in Singapore, uh, and what is lined up for us tomorrow for the finals. All right, well, that uh, means victory for Azerbaijan, 11-7 in the third game. Uh, straight winners for them. Uh, impressive performance by the three players. Uh, they seem to have a lot of fun together. Um, unfortunately for Belgium, they were just not uh, to the level of keeping up with Az Azerbaijan in this case. Uh, however, excellent performance by players from Azerbaijan. All right. The next match on this court is going to be France versus Belgium oh, in individual the women's the triples of Group A. And the winner, well, let's use this time to look at what's happening in Singapore. Next up, we've got the women's triples on court number two, Netherlands versus Switzerland. And a one from versus Belgium. In women's doubles, uh, Shen. King Shen and Ya Yifan have reached finals and they'll be playing finals of women's doubles against uh, Bak Hana and Lee Sohei from Korea. In mixed doubles, Matthijs Christiansen and Alexandra Boe will be playing against Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino. And we already mentioned that uh, in in singles, it would be Ginting versus Andres and Thompson. That would be one uh, match that everyone would be looking forward to. And in men's doubles, it would be Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi versus Liang Wei Kang and Wang Shang from China. So we do have a sizzling lineup for tomorrow in Singapore. And I'm sure all the viewers around the world are keenly looking forward to tuning into that event. All right. People on the chat, people on the YouTube live stream, tell us from where you are. 
tell us the country that you live in and something special about the city that you are uh, you are a resident of. We would love to hear from you and tell us the culture of badminton. How big is it in your city? We would love to hear your experiences. While we wait for the players uh, to take the court. judge you by your political, sexual or religious preferences, because in the end, there's a sinner in all of us. Prepare yourself, winter is coming. Sinner, S-I-M. Right, we are back with players arriving on the court. Number one, it's going to be individual women's triples event uh, between Netherlands and Switzerland. Netherlands is uh, seeded number two in this event, and it sure promises to be an exciting match. Ja, en dames en heren, we zien ze inmiddels hier op het veld staan en laten we hem hier allemaal achter ook eventjes uh, voor ze applaudisseren. We gaan uh, de volgende wedstrijd hier zien, Zwitserland tegen Nederland. In drie, in twee en klappen voor mee jongens, even klappen.
All right, welcome and ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a match uh, Netherlands versus Switzerland. From Netherlands, we have uh, Iris van Leise, Kiel Mahulete, and Imke van der Aar playing. Uh, taking a pretty healthy lead in the first game itself, the Dutch. Well, the lucky shuttle from the YouTube live stream is asking, is it three against three? Yes, it's three against three. Uh, that's innovation that's happening and uh, it does require you to it does require you to uh, have an excellent understanding and coordination among your partners. Uh, you are not allowed to hit the shuttle consecutively two times. So it means that your two other partners are supposed to have a good understanding with you on who's going to take the next shot. And as Wong Guyan says that it's it's hard to move on the court or the sand. Yes, it is indeed hard. Um, that's why it might appear a bit slow compared to the conventional badminton in a sport hall that we have been so accustomed to seeing. On sand, it's a it's a very different game and uh, also tests your coordination skills with your partners. As you can also imagine, it's difficult to apply the same concepts of footwork, split step, in in the in the sand. So you have to devise new strategies and think out of the box on how to uh, on how to score effective points. Good judgment by Dutch ladies. Seven all score. Uh, Swiss making a good comeback in the first game itself. Confusion uh, and a bit of miscommunication there. Uh, eventually gifting a point to Dutch. Good judgment again by Dutch. Uh, shuttle drifting away outside the playable area. Last few points have come with a flurry, and which means that uh, they are on the cusp of winning the first game, 11. And that went a bit too far as well. So helping Dutch to secure the first game in a uh, in matter of no time. Well, let us use this opportunity to thank our supporters and sponsors like Sinner, um, as well as uh, Victor. Do check out Sinner's website, sinner.eu, uh, on their product line and uh, some of the cool summer stuff that they have on offer. Uh, kudos to Badminton Netherlands, who has been the host of European qualifications um, this weekend. Um, they have really worked hard in ensuring that we have a, a well-managed and a successful event on our hands. And also kudos to people working so hard uh, beside the court, like cameramen and umpires, referees, also, the uh, the people managing the the music, the DJ, which has uh, kept the atmosphere very alive and helped all the people have a great time. Whoever is present in the arena. Excellent drop shot by Swiss ladies. Exploiting a gap which was there in the front of the court for in the Dutch half. Over. 
One thing that is noticeably missing from uh, the shots which are typically used for killing the rallies is even though doing a smash is quite tempting, it's not as easy to do a jump smash uh, just because of uh, the moving sand underneath your feet, uh, which does make a difference on how much uh, power you are able to impart on the shuttle as well as at what height are you able to uh, uh, hit with an acute angle. It does make a difference uh, and may lead to some errors in your service or received. Good judgment by Dutch. Equal scores on both ends, 4-4 four, four, between Dutch and Switzerland. A miss hit by Swiss there. A good coordination happening between the Dutch ladies. Uh, not on that occasion, though. Uh, miss hit outside the court. Uh, but in general, they have been uh, working together quite well. Gail, Iris, and Imke. Excellent commitment by Swiss uh, women's team. However, that did not stop Dutch from winning the second game, 11-7. And uh, Netherlands starts ahead, stands ahead by 2-0 with uh, potentially three games to go. However, Dutch ladies would like to wrap it up as fast as they can to conserve their energy. 
uh, Gail, Iris, and Imka really working well together. Ja, dames en heren, we gaan uh, weer beginnen. Make some noise for Switzerland and Nederland. Oh. All right, uh, back to the third game. Uh, Dutch have already raised to three to one in the third game. They would like to finish off the match by winning this game as well and hopefully conserve on their energy. It's been a long day for a lot of players. Uh, first playing the team relay event in the morning and now playing the individual events in the afternoon and the evening. Uh, so it's really important that they are actively looking for getting the right rest and be ready for the next match. Good judgment by Imke. The drop landing in the dead zone, giving the fifth point to Switzerland. And as the score stands, six is to five. Excellent uh, uh, commitment by Eris van Leyse and Imke van der And uh, help Gail to finish off the rally by doing a delicate drop, a cross drop, I must say. 
landing it right in the right hand side corner for Swiss team. Swiss are being able to keep a, a pretty neck-to-neck -neck score in the third game. Excellent body smash by Dutch. Well, two more points to go for Dutch to secure this win and retain their top position in the in the respective pool. Swiss team uh, on the other end where uh, on the side where Swiss uh, women are playing they're really trying to cheer them uh, a lot so that they get inspired to win the third game and then still keep the chances on well that that cheering has really helped I can tell you that uh, they're cheering vigorously for ensuring that they win the point and uh, uh, keep the keep the match alive Well, uh, Netherlands leading by one point, are one point away from securing this match and winning this uh, this bout. Oh, excellent lift by Imke, thereby giving them the win against Switzerland, 12 to 10 in the third game, and well played ladies, really deserved it. Some replays for you to enjoy on what happened in the third game. Dutch would be super proud that they, they were able to wrap up the game as fast as they have. Uh, Swiss <laughs> team, as you can all see, they tried their best to keep the keep the players motivated and keep them pumped up. All right. Well, we are going to take a short break now uh, before the next match starts. It's going to be men's triples event individual uh, of. Well, this is an exciting contest. Belgium versus Netherlands, the neighboring countries. We are going to see how that works out. And uh, if Belgium is able to come back from their defeat in the last game or last match. So that would be an exciting contest for the Dutch and Belgians. We'll take a short break. Stay tuned, guys. And uh, keep your comments flowing if you have questions or feedbacks or you know what how how badminton works in your part of the world please do express your opinions and uh, we'll be happy to keep an eye out for something interesting from your end
All right, uh, we are back for the next game here. Well, it happens to be Bulgaria versus France, which is going to be played on the court, which is going to be telecasted on YouTube. Uh, well, we did see some umpires grooving to the beats of the music here. Uh, tells uh, pretty much a, a good picture of what's happening. Uh, a very party-like environment. Uh, having a great time on the beach-like setting. Wonderful facility in a town called Werkendam, um, which should be roughly like an hour drive from Amsterdam, which everybody knows, of course. Um, the players seem to be having a great time. Uh, it has been a lovely weather. Um, uh, throughout the day and couldn't have been better for something as innovative and uh, uh, interesting as air badminton. The famous Frey Cox is taking his spot as well as a referee on the left hand side of your screen. And that's a Dutch announcer, Belgium versus Netherlands. which means Belgium versus Netherlands start. Which is indeed starting not on this court, but the other court, which unfortunately is not being telecasted. However, uh, this also promises to be an exciting match between France and Bulgaria. Bulgaria against France. Yeah. All right, well, uh, after a so-called and brief warm-up, I really doubt if anybody needs a warm-up in such a, uh, a summer-like weather, but nevertheless, uh, after the customary warm-up, uh, players are ready to take their positions. Uh, it's Bulgaria versus France. Uh, seems like it's going to be Bulgaria to start the service. Yeah, well, it's Bulgaria to serve. Well, the first point of the match goes to France. Uh, yes, well, we uh, we see that uh, it may not be as visible uh, but to spot the air shuttle while watching the match on YouTube stream. However, uh, let me assure you, it's extremely visible for the for the players. Uh, I think. Uh, is the contrast between the sunlight and the color of the shuttle, which makes it a bit difficult to be captured on the camera with also colorful backgrounds and posters behind the screen uh, in which the shuttle can kind of get camouflaged or a bit lost. So that remark is obviously understandable. However, uh, the players, the players who are holding the rackets in, the, in between, they seem to be having a great time. And uh, uh, nobody has complained yet about uh, getting blinded by the color of the shuttle. As we said, it's a it's an excellent sport for uh, people to enjoy with their families. Uh, also, 
professionals to maybe you know use their off peak season maybe in summer vacations to stay in touch with badminton on a beach like setting perhaps and uh, the beauty of air badminton and innovation of it is that its accessibility uh, everyone can enjoy the sport regardless of where you are and you are not confined by the sport halls or the courts for reserving and ensuring that you have uh, a fair chance to play every week Free love in favor of France, uh, already having secured the first uh, game. French uh, men's team has been very impressive so far.
excellent serve French a flick serve and uh, well they're really rushing with this set right uh, 8 0 uh, look to be clear clear favorites to uh, putting this one in their pocket as well French French just playing common sense badminton, um, not doing a lot of fancy stuff, making sure that they are keeping on with the neutral rallies, uh, waiting for uh, Bulgarians to make a mistake. Excellent placement again. Spotted the gap really well. A flick serve again, working to good effect. And looks like it uh, kissed the tape. Uh, the right spirit being applauded by Bulgarians. Always nice to see sport being played in good spirit. Uh, opponents applauding each other for demonstration of that spirit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The the traditional smash, jump and smash, it doesn't often work in the world of air badminton just because you are not able to get that thirst or that jump as effective. And um, the dynamics of the shuttle also make it a bit difficult to get it uh, at an acute angle from where you're standing sometimes. Or it's just a matter of evolution. And in a few years from now, the player should be adept and a better prepared on how to smash better on these courts. So, yet to be seen in the future, but let's focus on the event at hand. France has meanwhile secured uh, the second game quite easily, 11-3. So they look on course to winning this match against Bulgaria. Uh, co excellent coordination by all the three French players. Let's use that opportunity to thank our sponsor Sinners for helping and supporting this event uh, and make it a success. Do check out their cool summer products on the website sino.eu. French players cramping up the Bel Bulgarians uh, for room and uh, thereby inducing an error on their part. Um, good start for French in the third game. They would be ideally looking forward to wrapping up this game and winning the match. Again, uh, a very smart badminton by French. Uh, dropping the shuttle right in front of the person standing in the middle of the French out of Bulgarian half. The next uh, set of teams being called to get ready. Uh, this match on the verge of getting finished uh, quite fast. 
Um, French players uh, seem to have boarded a fast train in finishing this match. A uh, lot of mistakes from Bulgarians. Uh. Well, that's one way to smash. We spoke about how to be effective with your smashes on sand fields and uh, French showed us how to do it. 8-0, three more points to go to wrap up the formalities. That's one of, well, looks like there was an error committed by France giving the first point to Bulgarians in the third game. Out and that brings us to the match point. And the French on the cusp of a win here, retaining their top position in their pool. There it goes, and uh, which has been pretty much the story of this match. Congratulations to French men's individual team uh, for winning this one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a short break uh, now. For the next match, there will be no commentary uh, happening. The commentators have to replenish themselves, I guess. Uh, but however, we'll be soon be back with our expert comments as well as perhaps trying to see if we can catch hold of some players and know about their experiences of playing air badminton. So stay tuned on the live stream. The matches will go on as they have been since the morning. However, you will likely be hearing us in a, in a half an hour time or so. Thank you. Six when we were founded. We have been explorers who are looking for inspiration, excitement, challenges, and magical moments that arouse our endless curiosity. It is in our Dutch blood. So when the cold wind blows and leaves start to when the cooler and shorter days tell us summertime has ended and the nights become long, cold, and crystal clear. That's the moment we pack our bags and go. Our destination, wherever the road takes us. Because we're curious. We follow our own path and make our own choices. We are who we want to be, not who others want to see. We don't judge you by your political, sexual or religious preferences. Because in the end, there's a sinner in all of us. 
prepare yourself. Winter is coming. Sinner, S-I-M. Yes, we're getting ready for the next game. Next game, men's triple. And on court number one is Azerbaijan versus Denmark. Zo, en even uh, voor, <laughs> absoluut, uh, voor de Nederlanders onder ons, uh, het buffet is geopend. Je kan lekker een uh, hapje en een drankje komen halen, zo so in English, for all the players. Uh, dinner is opened, you can uh, get your dinner, some drinks, auf Deutsch. Uh, we have an Essen, uh, <laughs> auf die Haus, keine Ahnung, Entschuldigung. Het buffet is geöffnet. Dankeschön, dankeschön. Grüß Gott. Maar ondertussen gaan we lekker weer verder wat er op uh, veld 1 uh, staat te gebeuren. The next match on court number 1 is uh, Azerbeidzjan versus Denmark.
For the next teams, please get ready at the meeting point. Denmark versus Switzerland on Yes, two sets played. I want the next teams to get ready for the next games on court one. Denmark versus Switzerland on court two. Germany versus Belgium. And I'm talking about the women's triple. Please get ready at the meeting point. Yes, only the people of court uh, number one has to get ready. And that's the woman's triple, Germany versus Belgium. Please go to the midpoint.
Yes, what a nice win by Denmark. Please give them, the, give them a hand of applause. Very good. And of course, uh, the runner-up. Also, a big applause. Azerbaijan. The next game on a court number one is Denmark versus Switzerland. And then I'm talking about the a woman's triple. Since 1996, when we were founded, we have been explorers who are looking for inspiration, excitement, challenges, and magical moments that arouse our endless curiosity. It is in our Dutch blood. When the cooler and shorter days tell us summertime has ended and the nights become long, cold, and crystal clear. That's the moment we pack our bags and go. Our destination, wherever the road takes us. Because we're curious. We follow our own path and make our own choices. We are who we want to be, not who others want to see. We don't judge you by your political, sexual or religious preferences. Because in the end, there's a sinner in all of us. Prepare yourself. Winter is coming. Sina, S-I-M. Yes, and the next the ladies triple game is already about to start. The women are doing their warm-up. 
And here on court one, Denmark versus Switzerland. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for being tuned to this uh, live stream of special event AWBG European Qualifier 2023. My name is Rohit Kulkarni and I'm uh, speaking to you from beautiful town of Werkendam in the Netherlands. Uh, the current match going on right now is Denmark versus Switzerland in the women's uh, individual triple event. And uh, Denmark, as you know, it's seeded number three. Uh, so they are the, clearly the favorites to win here. The match is just getting started. Uh, however, while you enjoy the match, we have managed to get one more special guest for you uh, today. And uh, we are going to announce the name in a moment uh, by the time we fix our stuff up here from equipment point of view. 
and then you'll get a chance to kind of um, know a bit more about the badminton culture in the Netherlands as well as how how it is growing in Europe. So stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be a pretty insightful interview. Meanwhile, the match between Denmark and Switzerland is kind of going neck to neck with 7-6. Uh, I would really like to thank all the viewers who are currently tuned in to enjoy the Air Badminton um, uh, innovation. We are having a wonderful day so far uh, in the Netherlands and we appreciate you joining from different parts of the world uh, in, in, in interest as well as with curiosity on how it's all working out. Switzerland managed to stream ahead with a 10 to 6 with just one point to go to win the game. Well, uh, the interesting part about air badminton is that it does appear a bit slow if you compare that with conventional badminton, uh, which is played in uh, sport halls, of course, or on wooden courts. However, um, it, it's still equal amount of physical effort that goes into making the rallies happen. Uh, the same tactical awareness that you need to have as a as a player. So it it's just a whole new ball game when it comes to air badminton. Uh, with a triple event where you are partnering with two more uh, players within your team, uh, it also makes it important for you to be extremely aware about your partner's spatial presence and uh, ensure that you're able to work together as a team. A lot of players who play air badminton have also been really good players in the conventional badminton uh, circuits. Uh, however, some of the Practices and you know areas like muscle memory is something that they would need to um, compromise on or sacrifice to make sure that they are able to still play with the new rules of air badminton. Uh, there is a pretty significant drift uh, induced by the wind speed at any venue, and that plays a pretty crucial part in uh, keeping the rallies ongoing or effectiveness of one side over the other. Um, and hence, uh, just like we do change in the third game of conventional badminton match, the, uh, we also have the practice of changing the sides in the fifth game, if at all the match goes until that point. Where we are situated as commentators, uh, which is right perpendicular to the, the court that you see on your screens, uh, we are able to observe a visible deviation because of the wind. Uh, and it's, it's quite understandable, but the shuttle is uh, researched and manufactured in such a way that it's heavy enough to, um, uh, to, to, to have a stable trajectory, even though you might notice a bit of deviation when the shuttle goes uh, in one particular angle. But it still requires the players to uh, ensure that they are adaptable, they are able to gauge how the wind is, and uh, they adapt their game accordingly. And you often see the influence of wind in a sport like golf, right? Uh, wind speed is an extremely crucial component and a factor uh, which makes ball go, uh, you know, have a massive deviation. And uh, you can compare air badminton to something like golf where wind is a part of the sport and you have to just embrace it and get better at it with good practice. Having said that, uh, we are here with an extremely special guest. I'm going to help him set up his microphone.
All right, we are back, and as promised, we have got an extremely special guest with us. Uh, his name is Jan Helmond. For those of you worldwide who do not know Jan Helmond, he is the current president of Badminton Netherlands Association with the Netherlands. Um, and uh, I, have, I have known Jan for at least last two years, if not more. And uh, some of the things that I have noticed has have been very positive when it comes to growth of badminton in the Netherlands. Um, and I want to, first of all, before he gets started, I want to welcome him. And also want to congratulate him for the recent award in the BWF ceremony uh, for the participation award. So, fantastic job, Jan! Uh, but welcome. Thank you. All right. How was? Yeah. It's. Uh, let's let's talk about that award first because that's fresh in everyone's mind. And uh, I know badminton Netherland uh, colleagues like Robert put in a lot of hard work in in getting that idea to a reality. Uh, tell us about your experience about Bamito and how did it all get all conceptualized and eventually become a reality? Yes, well, I think that uh, at first uh, you're right. Robert did an amazing uh, job with, uh, of course, a, a team of uh, people uh, he was leading. And uh, well, congratulations for Barbara and Robert mm -hmm. uh, here still. And uh, I think that uh, when you talk about uh, Bamito, it is so nice that participation from all groups in society, from all different kind of children, young children, older children, that they all can play badminton is, uh, is wonderful to see. You can see everyone, you see everyone having fun, you see uh, uh, people who cannot maybe afford it, uh, let them play too. And, uh, well, I was so glad and so proud <laughs> in winning this award. And so were we uh, in Netherlands when we saw that announcement on social media and all the photos coming up with you, Barbara, Robert, uh, in, it wasn't in Kuala Lumpur, right? Uh, yeah, so fantastic, well done. Uh, Jan, I have always appreciated your insights, your experience and your overall career in badminton. Uh, but um, what are some of the recent innovations uh, that you foresee will uh, define the future for us? I think we are right here mm -hmm. now. It's, I think that uh, air badminton is, uh, is a, a different kind of sport, of course, but it's also uh, an innovation. It, uh, it gives a lot of people uh, opportunity who never played badminton before to play it now. Eh? I mean, the slogan always and everywhere is a very strong slogan because you can play it uh, everywhere, always. And uh, I think this is uh, something... Uh, I really, really, really like. Mm -hmm. It's an innovation you can see, you can feel, you can play. Absolutely. And uh, I was speaking with Ian Wright uh, just some time back. Uh, clearly, he mentioned that Badminton Netherland has been one of the first adopters of uh, air badminton as a concept. Yes. Uh, and we also see that in some of the skill levels of our players because they have been used to it. Yes. Uh, so uh, a job well done, I guess, from, a, from an embracing point of view. Uh, but do you see this spreading across Europe uh, more and more in coming years as well? Yes. Okay. Yes, sure. Um, I'm, 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 I, I talked with a lot of uh, colleagues, of course, in uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, with uh, uh, the French, uh, the, the Germans. Uh, so many people are uh, starting up with uh, air badminton. And uh, I was uh, able to have a, a presentation about air badminton uh, last year in uh, Bangkok. And uh, especially what I uh, what I like about air badminton is that because you can play it uh, everywhere, uh, also a lot of older people can do it. And when you talk about moving, when you talk about health, it is a, it's a it's a great aspect. I mean, we can play this. Right. And and, and when uh, when you're old, even uh, there are. 80-year-old people now who are right. playing badminton. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. And I know when the, when I f met you for the first time, I think one thing that I remember from that conversation is that you are very focused on vitality. You are very focused on ensuring that there is an aspect of healthy lifestyle in the social communities. Uh, how far do you think now, after like maybe in last two years, uh, have you been able to achieve uh, some of those goals and some of the vision that you had back then? Oh, it is. Uh, I still have, of course, uh, this vision, uh, and I must say um, there is a lot of research uh, done, 
about the healthy aspects of uh, of badminton. Uh, it's 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 of course uh, not only about your mentality, your mind, but it's also about uh, the physics. But I must say that uh, there even are uh, uh, people with Parkinson mm -hmm. who are playing now, and there is some research done about what sport is healthy and uh, what uh, what improves you. Uh, and um, I'm very glad with that, mm -hmm. but I think we have to go a little step further. I mm -hmm. think we have to be a little bit more, um, well, the marketing must be better of it. Mm -hmm. we, must, we must explain why badminton is such a healthy sport, why air badminton is such a healthy sport. We must explain it. Uh, by this research. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, you mentioned about uh, m marketing and uh, promoting a sport which is not the predominant sport in a country, right? Uh, for example, in Netherlands, we all know football and hockey seem uh. to be the traditional big big boys in, yeah. in the sporting world. Uh, but, but it's very impressive to see that slowly the numbers of badminton have been increasing yes. uh, lately. Uh, extremely good sign. Uh, what do you attribute that growth to? I'm not sure. I, I think uh, maybe, well, Corona is over. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are a little bit more excited in, in, in doing things together. Um, and maybe I think when I look upon the, the badminton in the Netherlands, I see much more people with happy faces. I mean, a tournament now is so different uh, in an in experience. Right. And I must say, we have a long way to go. I, I told you uh, last week uh, I w when I was in uh, Kuala Lumpur, there was also the Masters tournament. Mm -hmm. Then you're sitting there mm -hmm. in this big sports hall with uh, about mo more than over 10,000 people who are shouting, who wow. are just watching one match. And then it, it almost makes you get tears in your eyes because then you look around you and then you hear this. And of course, I've been in Asia uh, for badminton before, but still, every time I'm there, I'm so happy and jealous at the same <laughs> time because then I go back to the Netherlands and then I think, well, wow, we have to do the same thing. So right. I think when uh, I have a dream, uh, if I can express it in that way, it is that uh, we will have 14,000 people sitting in a sports hall and shouting and badminton is uh, just as popular as soccer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one uh, personal observation that I had uh, is that uh, the Bond Association in the Netherlands has been extremely supportive of the newer ideas coming out. Uh, which may or may not have been the, uh, the the picture before. However, there is a greater acceptance towards newer way of doing things. Air badminton is, of course, a very good example of it, and it has been a big success. Uh, the event today is a good example of it. Um, how does how does badminton Netherlands try to ensure that people with ideas are able to come forward, and then those ideas are evaluated accordingly, and then also put in practice, and they support for it. Yeah, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, and, and we're busy because uh, we have a small bureau, eh? mm -hmm. and uh, but when you when you look upon the projects like uh, Probeer Badminton, mm -hmm. try try badminton now. Yeah, it is uh, it is hard working, mm -hmm. but we are successful in that. Yeah, proud in that again because mm -hmm. more people are playing now. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I think that we have a, a very listening ear and listen to all the people who have ideas now. And then we say, well, this is a good idea. I mean, uh, you yourself are an example. Eh? You have this, 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 this great uh, idea in, in how can I sell badminton in Eindhoven, mm -hmm. eh, as you did. And this is, uh, this is so different. And we, we listen to that and then we think, how can we share it mm -hmm. with uh, all the other uh, uh, clubs and uh, here in, uh, in the Netherlands? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what we're trying to do, and we're going to we trying to find a solution, a way mm -hmm. to 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 express this. Right, right. Oh, that's that's a very good, very well explained uh, uh, objective, I guess. Um, so, Jan, um, in terms of uh, I think inclusion, diversity, and equality was also one of the uh, uh, strong goals for Badminton Netherlands. As a matter of fact, it is extremely strong goal for NOC NSF. Yes. In yes. In, in in Netherlands. Yes. Uh, how are, in your opinion, how are we faring in terms of getting more inclusive, becoming more diverse, 
uh, within Netherlands and maybe what you observe in outside of Netherlands? Well, uh, what I observe is that uh, everyone is working very hard on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and, and, and uh, we try to. And uh, uh, today we had this, I uh, had this board meeting and uh, we discussed uh, the facts, uh, how can we move on with uh, para badminton, but also with special, uh, special badminton. Mm -hmm. So we, we really, and it's, it's not always uh, easy because you need, uh, uh, you need, you need things for that. You need to, 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 uh, to be sure to adapt mm -hmm. and uh, but but we are so much willing right and i really want to have uh, for example i really want to have a strong para badminton team mm -hmm. so we we have to dive into that more right still right. more but we do it yeah no i think uh, i'm very confident that we are going to pull it off eventually one day um so let's shift up topics a bit over here uh, when it comes to examples like France, for example, right? Uh, I think uh, they have kind of created a model within the country where they are able to come up with a lot of budding talent uh, currently, and they are they are fairly doing well at a at a European level, but also maybe at a world level. Yes. So, uh, in your discussions with the French counterparts or your friends in Fra in France, uh, are there are there like learnings that we can easily implement at a ground level within within Netherlands? So that we are also able to grow with it, and and uh, do something that works in uh, our neighboring country. Yes, when I look up, uh, uh, when I look upon France, they are. I'm, I'm quite jealous too. I mean, <laughs> uh, the way they are uh, working now, and uh, they, they have, their it's broad. You know, they have choices to make right. and uh, when you compare that to the Netherlands mm -hmm. we have to work on that broad scene again we have to have more players to choose out to choose from and this is something that uh, well I uh, I really uh, congratulate French with uh, with that but you can see that because it's broad they have a lot of players mm -hmm. who can play against right. each other so uh, we have uh, well as we say in the Netherlands uh, uh, smaller selection, right? Kleinere vijver om uit te vissen. Right. <laughs> I will not translate it, but <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, no, that's uh, that's a very good insight. I, I think, uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer in uh, picking up the best practices uh, everywhere and doing what's right for your uh, passion or for your goal. And I think uh, uh, there are some examples, right? N n you know, in our neighborhood, wh which we can learn from and also yes. implement for ourselves. Um, yeah, and how does your typical schedule look like these days? I mean, I know you're a very busy man. You have to travel for different commitments and stuff. But tell us a bit about your personal life. A personal life. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm rebuilding my house. It's uh, We had a little, uh, well, it burned down. So oh. it was something. So we had to build it up again. I hope not big again. one. So, no, no. <laughs> and and uh, so I'm busy with that. But on the other hand, when you look at my schedule, uh, uh, it's a lot of badminton. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, on Friday, it was of course opening here. Uh, today we had this uh, this meeting, and now I'm here. And tomorrow we have this uh, Dutch uh, Junior Championships. Uh, I'm going there uh, in uh, in the morning, mm -hmm. and then later on, of course, I will be here yeah. by the closure of uh, of it. And then uh, the rest of the week, uh, there is some badminton <laughs> there. <laughs> but I must say that it feels great to be uh, back in this uh, badminton scene. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a lovely world. It's a nice world. And, uh, well, you know, when, when I always say when uh, you first laugh, uh, and, and that w this was badminton, it uh, never rusts. <laughs> so uh, it no. still is there. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But uh, do you also need to travel for your work commitments out outside of Europe? Uh, I mean, Kuala Lumpur was, of course, probably one of your recent trips. Yeah, I do a lot of consulting, of course, in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a little bit, uh, mm, you can get a little bit dizzy from all these right. uh, <laughs> jet lags. And uh, last time was, of course, in Kuala Lumpur. But before that, I was in St. Martin, there's three days. And then you have such a time difference from 12, 12 hours. And for me, that's, uh, on my age now, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> I hope you are able to delegate a bit with your team members. <laughs> I can. Oh, really? I have... I have <laughs> wonderful team members and mm -hmm. uh, Badminton Netherlands is uh, a very, well, I think it's a strong organization, but it's also a very warm organization. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm 
not only proud on that, but I always, I also like it that uh, sometimes they say, well, Jan, take it easy. And Barbara <laughs> says, Jan, you're doing a lot, take it easy. And so I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. You don't have to worry about me, so <laughs> it's it's okay. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Now well, that's good. Uh, I see that BWF is w working very hard to uh, host the event in Bali in August. What can you tell us about, about that event and, you know, the preparations going for it? <laughs> well, um, this, this, this tournament, of course, is important where we are now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course, we want to go to, uh, to Bali as, uh, as, uh, as a Dutch team. Right. And, uh, well, one of the main prep we, we trained for that, of course, mm -hmm. and the team trained for that. And uh, this, is, this is a very important uh, weekend. Yeah. So I'm really hoping <laughs> that, uh, that we're coming through and yeah. that we go to Bali. Because when you play at the World Games, the Beach World Games, it is... Well, it's really something. Right. And then we are there, and it's the first time, and it's air badminton, and mm -hmm. it's almost the BWF almost invented it with us. So, yeah, I think uh, we have a right for that. But yeah. you never can talk in sports about rights you're having. You always have to play for it, and you always have to win. Right. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a very good insight. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, it's a it's a new sport, right? And uh, people have been very transparent about it. Uh, in my discussion with Ian Wright, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about the rules of the game and how it all came to friction. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, in, in our discussion, it became very apparent that rules were carefully thought about to encourage more rallies, for example, and then uh, ensuring that there is good entertainment for viewership. Uh, I think sport is all about how many eyeballs are you attracting and then uh, making sure that people are getting a good value for their time that they spend on looking at the sport. Uh, so it definitely offers more commercial opportunities, if I may, uh, for the players, for the sponsors, for the event management. Um, there, of course, there will be evolutions, as we have seen in badminton over the years, over the past four or five decades, uh, and that's all fine. But I think the important thing is that we have got a great start in air badminton now. And it's, it's all about just continuing the momentum. I think you're so right. I mean, um, I, I told it uh, during uh, the uh, the opening uh, mm -hmm. speech. I said, well, we all love badminton, yeah. but this weekend we are in love with air badminton. We are <laughs> coming. And uh, I think that uh, air badminton is uh, it's a different sport. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's a great sport. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's great. Um, Jan, how do you look at uh, the the next three to five years for badminton Netherlands and badminton Europe uh, overall uh, on its trajectory? I'm sure you're involved with a lot of your European counterparts to define a unified strategy around growth of badminton and some of the changes happening. But in your words, how do you see badminton growing in Europe? I think we have to, uh, we all in Europe have to have uh, uh, great marketing for badminton. We all have to make clear what kind of sports we are. And, and I mean, not a kind of sport in, in the sense of uh, explosivity and, 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 and technically and tactically, but mainly uh, how everyone can play it. Right. And then we need examples. And these are the top players, of mm -hmm. course. Eh? So we have to work on that. However, I think that when you talk about air badminton, we have to develop this too. Mm -hmm. Because the more people have this racket, mm -hmm. and whether it's outside or whether it's inside, whether it's on the beach or it's in the street, the more chances you have that these people are coming into the halls right. too. Yes. So we talk about two different kinds of sports, mm -hmm. but with air badminton, you promote badminton. So I think that uh, when you talk about Europe, we all have to work on that. Mm -hmm. We all have to work on the fact that everyone will get this racket in his hands right. and everyone will play. Right. And it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, as we say in the Netherlands, camping yeah. badminton. It doesn't matter when it's that. It's right. good. Yeah, it's good. And uh, I think I'm really a big fan of initiatives like Shuttle Time. Yes. Uh, a, a great initiative to promote badminton in school. I think there has also been literature around uh, associating badminton with better uh, 
maturity or academic performance. So I think you spoke about marketing. I think we have to base our marketing on scientific facts which have been yeah. researched. And I yes. think that will convince the masses of how beneficial it is for their healthy lifestyle overall. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what you can see in the, in the Netherlands, in badminton Netherlands, we have, uh, I think we have quite a, a, good, a good marketing. Uh, however, when you go into uh, a different kind of sport, you have to improve your marketing again. And that's what we did with Air Badminton too. Right. So I'm very happy with the team mm -hmm. that's working on that because they know how to to sell it in an honest way. Right. You know, it's not, it's good. It's very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I like. And that's, wh that's what I think we need more. And we would love to share this with all our European friends. And mm -hmm. we're already doing that. The contacts are so are good mm -hmm. and it, it, it's very funny because when you look upon uh, the courts they are fighting and fighting <laughs> and everyone wants to win of course but when you look up about on a on a on a different level when mm -hmm. you talk in badminton europe with the the the, the, the meetings there everyone uh, is willing to share mm -hmm. yeah really awesome awesome well jan i just want to thank you for spending your valuable time with us i know no, thanks you are you are a very busy man. I got so many things uh, probably <laughs> okay. churning in your mind, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate your leadership. Uh, I honestly do. Uh, I think okay. you have brought about a very positive change in the Netherlands, and uh, I'm I'm really proud to see that our name is featuring not only at a European circles but also at a world stage. So thank you for all your hard work and your leadership. Robert, thank you, and uh, go on with your work in the Netherlands. <laughs> thank you for your support. Good. I'll try my best. <laughs> Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be back soon again. I hope we en you enjoyed the interview with Jan Helmond, President of Badminton Netherlands. And uh, uh, feel free to po post your questions in the chat box, and we'll be sure to ask him if at all we didn't cover that part. Thank you. We'll be back soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rohit Kulkarni again, reporting back from Verkindam. Uh, well, I hope that all of you enjoyed the interview with uh, President of Badminton Netherlands, Jan Helmond. Uh, extremely insightful. Uh, he had a lot to share from uh, his his uh, discussions and cooperations at a badminton Europe level, as well as uh, the strategies that they have to help our sport grow. But we are just in time for the match between Denmark and Switzerland. Both the teams are at 2-2. It's really even Stevens at this point in time. Denmark leading with a slender lead of one point, 6-5. And this game is going to define who wins the bout. So let's see how that works out. Denmark winning some quick points and uh, on the verge of uh, claiming this match. Closer to the success, uh, just two points away from winning the match. Denmark. I hear some comments from our friends in Azerbaijan that they love air badminton in Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah, so do we in Netherlands. Welcome, I hope you are having a good time. Azerbaijan seems to be playing really well uh, in the tournament. So thanks for joining and supporting your country. A long rally going on, no one willing to bend and give the point. Excellent judgment by Denmark, uh, just on the cusp of win here, only one point to go. Brilliant rally constructed by both the teams, really fighting out hard for at this crucial point and it does seem like the game is almost in Denmark's pocket here with only one point to go. And the lust of killing that <laughs> uh, probably was a factor why she missed on smashing it out. Uh, but that happens so often. You have to contend with uh, variable wind speed and your desire to smash. And finally, Denmark managed to close that uh, with a two-point lead and finally making it 11-8. Congratulations to the ladies from Denmark. Well played. A great fought-out match between Switzerland and Denmark. And overall, great entertainment for all the audience. All right, the, the Swiss in action to, uh, to always support their team members, always a great sight to see. Having good time supporting your teammates, contributing to the positive vibe. Well, the Denmark is going to feature on this court immediately. Uh, 
but in individual men's triples event. The game is going to be between Denmark and Czech Republic. Let's take a, a short break uh, till the time players come out uh, for their game and then we'll soon resume the commentary post that. Stay tuned guys. Thank you so much for your support and availability as well as presence on the live stream. Really appreciate it.
All right, we are back in the commentator's box. And we are witnessing Czech Republic versus Denmark on your screens. Uh, Denmark leading by a healthy lead of four points and on the verge of winning the first game. Uh, I would like to thank all the viewers who have been on the line um, witnessing these exciting event matches. And I hope that all of you are equally excited for the finals in Bali in the month of August. All right, well, that's the end of the first game, 11-5. All right, and the second game, first game being won by Denmark. Uh, the second game stands at 2-2. Uh, the Czech Republic is being represented by uh, three players. Uh, and do pardon my pronunciation because I'm not so good with Czech last names, but I think I can manage the first names quite well. Uh, it's Dominic Kapriva, uh, David Smutny, and Adam Sulk. Again, my apologies if I did not pronounce the last names particularly that well. Uh, do correct me on how to pronounce it well. And uh, we will quickly look into the Danish players as well. Uh, Denmark is being represented by Rasmus Espersen, Marcus R Rincho, and Mars Togensen. It's probably a good idea for me to catch hold of uh, the Zek players after the game. Uh, just make sure that I get a bit of orientation on how to pronounce their last names correctly. Excellent smash by Silk, if I'm saying that right. Uh, maintaining an aggressive uh, rally there, Zek team. Well, we see that slow, uh, slowly the sun is uh, setting in and we see a shadow on the um, side where Zek team is playing. Uh, it's of course nice. Uh, it has been uh, quite a warm day throughout. And uh, 
we are guessing it's a bit more soothing to play uh, in uh, a, a calm breeze uh, with less temperature uh, compared to almost scorching heat that we had uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning till perhaps 4 o'clock in the evening. Excellent uh, commitment by Zach team. However, uh, still the drop shot was too effective. Earlier in the day, uh, we had some really effective and uh, interesting conversations with uh, personnel from BWF, uh, like Ian Wright, who has been the development director of for BWF based in Kuala Lumpur. We also met with Victor Amfilov, who is technical director of Badminton Netherlands. We had a very good uh, conversation with uh, uh, Jan Helmond just a few minutes ago, uh, who gave us an insight on what's happening at a European level, what's happening at Dutch level. Uh, as well as some of the discussions that he has a uh, international stage so excellent work uh, uh, under him as well and how can we forget robert de kaiser uh, the award winning um, colleague of a colleague within Madame netherland who won award for a creation of Bamito with his colleagues like Barbara Moura um, and who have really worked hard in ensuring that uh, we create an attractive um, way in which we can attract more masses, more kids towards badminton and keep it attractive for them uh, to eventually realize the benefits of playing the sport. All in all, an extremely productive and educational day. It is uh, quite noticeable that um, uh, the umpires pay a very close eye on the height at which the service is being done. However, we do not have a scale like a conventional badminton match where uh, it could be compared with a level or height. So it would be an interesting conversation with the umpires of how do they assess if a particular serve is uh, legal or invalid especially in a new sport like air badminton and uh, which of course has much more flexibility in its uh, in its area where you can potentially serve we'll try to catch hold of Frey Cox who has been uh, who has been an extremely experienced umpire and a referee uh, for several high profile events uh, he happens to be the one who is uh, visible on the left hand side of the court trying to be a line judge keenly observing how the serve is being done what do you think about the the strategies employed, do you see a particular tactic being employed commonly across all the teams that you saw the whole day? Tell us what you observed and we will be glad to call out those observations if you are able to type it out in the YouTube chat box. And if you also see advantages of air badminton in one's ability to lead a healthy lifestyle, making it more accessible. Tell us your opinion about it. We would love to hear from you.
that was the end of the third game which was acclaimed by Denmark uh, which tilts the match slightly in their favor of uh, two is to one games <coughs> um, I'm sure Denmark would like to uh, close out the match as fast as they can by wrapping up the fourth game in their favor as well however uh, I'm sure Zek Republic team will also give a very tough fight let's see how that pans out By the way, who, which audiences are from Asian countries today on our line? Share the flag that you represent. We would love to hear if what have been your experiences of air badminton in your country. Denmark uh, politely asking uh, Zek team if uh, the shuttle was grounded before the it got lifted in the air um, to which uh, excellent positioning by uh, Danish players uh, completely catching uh, Zek team in the wrong position and on the wrong foot. Smiles on the faces, always nice to see. Flick serve doing the trick over there. Good serve by Denmark. 2-2. Two -two. Beautiful lift in the far end of the backhand corner. Well played by Zek, player. What a wonderful day it has been. Um, exciting matches, really close fought matches. Uh, excellent weather in town of Werkendam in the Netherlands. Uh, great spirit by all the players representing all different nationalities. Hard work, commitment and uh, great work by the officials hosting this event. All in all, all the ingredients required for a successful event. I'm not sure like what exactly happened over there. It seemed quite um, comfortably in. Nevertheless, players have got on with it. Wow, that's uh, that's instinctive return, but really well played by the Danish player. All right, well, we are looking at a probable Danish victory. Uh, only three points more to go to reach 11. 
and it looks highly likely that they would be emerging as victors in this match. Easily left out by uh, Danish, no need of intervention there. Uh, an easy point, a lift to long. That takes them closer to their mark of 11 points. Good deceptive return by Czech Republic team. All right, well, that marks the end of uh, the match between Denmark and Czech Republic. Denmark winning it uh, relatively comfortably with 3-1. Uh, however, it was a good fight given by uh, Zach boys and uh, well done to Danish. Uh, and all the best to the upcoming matches for the Czech Republic team. The people are now uh, busy in ensuring that the sand is kind of evened out a bit of water is sprayed in the sand so that it remains a bit moist and which would help uh, footwork and uh, running around the sand i suppose for the players uh, that has been a uh, routine for the officials and uh, the people supporting the event well with that we'll take a short break um, and uh, await for the next game, which is scheduled to be Bulgaria versus the top seeded France in the individuals women's triples category. I would like to thank all of the viewers on the YouTube uh, who have uh, been persistent and we have been um, engaged in the stream uh, throughout the day. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your presence and your comments, your feedback means a lot to us. Um, and uh, thank you for supporting all the hard work being done by officials trying to promote our beautiful sport of badminton. Stay tuned, we'll be back soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rohit Kulkarni back again in the commentary box of the AWBG European Qualifier 2023. We are playing the women's triple event. And the current match is going on between Bulgaria and France. And France happens to be the number one seeded team in the women's triples category. Well, that's a point lost, but still happy smiles all around. Always nice to see that uh, all the players are having good fun. Excellent clear by French ladies, uh, hitting it right at the back line tape or the line on the Bulgarian side. Uh, beautiful shot. That makes it 8-4. Uh, good smash by Bulgarian player. The French team is represented by, we'll get to that in a moment. By Lorraine Bauman, uh, Ophelia Cachier, Charlotte Ganchi, and Emmy Gulbard. Having said that, let me put a disclaimer. If I mispronounce your last name specifically, please do let me know. Accept excuses as well. Uh, an area for me to work on. <laughs> However, uh, we have also have Bulgarian team being represented by getting the list. Mihaila Chepisheva. Gergana Pavlova and Sevitina Popivanova. Excellent smash by French. Uh, that gives them the first game. Excellent support by uh, our sponsor, Sinner. They have some really cool offerings, which you will be easily able to find on their website, sinner.eu. All right, uh, looks like all six players are ready for the next game. France to serve. That's a fairly strong backhand, I must say that, uh, f for taking a shuttle out way to the back.
two left in favor of Bulgaria. For our viewership on the YouTube live stream, tell us which country do you live in? You can mention your country name in the chat box. Four two in favor of France. Well, an attempted backhand, which did not exactly execute as expected. Uh, <laughs> narrowly out. Yeah, let's take a moment for all the officials for all the people of Badminton Netherlands, Air Badminton who have worked hard uh, for the last several months and of course this weekend to make this event as successful as it has been. Um, needless to say, uh, there have also been people working hard on camera work, telecasting, music, announcements. So it has truly been a team effort which has made today possible. Change of shuttles, requested by French. French are leading uh, by two points, seven is to five. Uh, the temperature is uh, slowly subsiding, which is probably making it a bit more easier on players to play. There is a cool breeze flowing um, over the arena, which uh, which also helps the helps the case. All right, France on the verge of winning the second game as well. Okay. 
Well, the two smashes not going in France's favor, uh, although they were quite smashable shuttles overall. However, unfortunately hitting the net. All right, well, B Bulgarian team uh, is sure having a lot of fun, uh, regardless of if they win the rally or not, which is always nice uh, to see. Uh, excellent lift by French, uh, hitting right to the rear part of the Bulgarian side. Very well, very good match going on, positive vibes around, always good to see. Excellent uh, drop shot, what we call in badminton language, forehand net drop, which is not exactly a net drop in this case within air badminton, of course. <laughs> Two, oh. Three, two. So that was over. Three all. Inside. Server's over. Four, three. <coughs> Out. Server's over. Four, oh. Said what? Five, four. <laughs> that was a bit of a funny event there. Uh, players getting crammed for space in, in an effort to avoid confusion ended up colliding against each other. <laughs> 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 it's probably one of the funniest match oh, <laughs> today is a uh, lot of laughs, a lot of smiles, <laughs> players having a good time as well as creating a bit of confusion for the entertainment of the audience. Uh, yeah, great spirit all around <laughs> as far as nobody's getting hurt.
Uh, good that positioning by uh, Bulgarian team right in the Five, uh, midfield of uh, the French half. What has been most pleasing is uh, how much fun are the players having while Art? playing this game? And uh, you would generally associate oh. high-profile events and players being super serious in badminton, uh, trying their best to win every single point. But uh, this has been a very refreshing change, uh, which has come in form of air badminton, where Seven, six. players are just, you know, having a ball of a time and making most of their presence in the Netherlands. Out. Serve is over. 7-0. Oh. Beautiful punch clear eight, by French. Uh, taking their score to 8. Uh, maintaining a slender lead of 1 point between them and Bulgaria. French would be ideally looking forward to wrapping up this game and the match. Out. Uh, well judged by Nine, French. Seven. I haven't Ten. seen Match point. <laughs> more fun-loving team than <laughs> Bulgaria. <laughs> Kudos to them for keeping a very positive mindset, uh, having fun among themselves, uh, you know, laughing together, having fun together. Uh, always fantastic to see. Serve is over. Eight, ten. Brilliant positioning and uh, a placement by a Bulgarian player to reduce the deficit uh, and uh, getting close to Out. good judgment. Letting the shuttle Ten. travel to, oh. the, to outside of the court. All right, that uh, equals the score in the third game. Bulgarians are kind of making a mini comeback here. Eleven game point. 10. Wow. Now, uh, Bulgarians are in the lead. In spite of uh, that fall after returning the shuttle, they still somehow managed to return the shuttle and score a point out of it. Out. Uh, and the out. Game. Fantastic. Wow. We are kind of uh, witnessing something unexpected. Bulgarians third have game, kind of come back Bulgaria. in the game 12, by 10. scoring the third Brunswick game and making it 2-1. Look at that. Smiles. Great to see.
for the game, level, play. That was over. <laughs> that uh, replay package is something One that I should play. keep saved. And okay. whenever you're feeling down, open it and view it again because Bulgarians are sh are sure to make you make your day brighter. Make sure that you clip that and keep it for your own uh, reference in the future. That was over. Excellent replay package. <laughs> One oh. Out. Two, one. <laughs> that was over. Two all. All right, well, um, it's pretty even, Stevens, in the uh, fourth game. Three, two. France does have uh, another match coming up at uh, around 8.50 local time in Netherlands, which is uh, roughly 50 minutes from now. Uh, we do foresee that there might Play. be a bit of delay in getting that match started. However, that over. France will be desperately looking forward to conserving their energy and being ready for the match against Germany. Especially because Germany has played two matches till now in their pool and have won both the games against uh, Belgium and Bulgaria. That so French definitely would be looking forward to making sure that they have Four, their energy three. tanks full and uh, giving their best against the Germans. Five, three. Thank you for everyone who have uh, liked and commented Four. on the li wow. YouTube live stream. We would love to hear from where you are watching the stream. And what do you think about trying out Air Badminton for the first time, if you are yet to do so? Five O. Oh. Can you adjust the line, please, France? Thank you. A long serve. And serve is over. We should probably start counting how many times Bulgarian players have fallen Six, down <laughs> in this whole match. Uh, Hopefully. It's all for good. Uh, the match is going on really well. They're having a good time. France leading marginally by one point. Six is to five. Oh, uh, persistence over. and not giving up has resulted in Six. getting a point oh. for the Bulgarian team. Well played, good rally all around. Next to the line, please. Uh, keeping the rallies ongoing uh, surely seems to be working slightly in favor of Bulgarians, while uh, French are more keen to kill and smash and finish the rally as fast as they can, which is for understandable reasons. Wait.
Excellent placement again Seven. by Bulgaria. Six. Very good anticipation. Even before the French uh, returned the uh, uh, rally, uh, the Bulgarian had anticipated where it's going to land and eventually was prepared for playing a cross drop shot. Again, an excellent deceptive Eight, lift. Six. They're by catching fr French players by surprise. 8 to 6. Bulgaria is kind of making a comeback now. Uh, after lagging uh, behind by two games, they not only won the third one, but are on the verge of winning the fourth one as well. Time's over. And uh, this time, the long rallies did not work Seven, in Bulgaria's eight. favor. Uh, nevertheless, um, it's one point for France, reducing the deficit by one. One can see the similarities between a uh, women's doubles game in conventional badminton match and a uh, women's triples game in air badminton match. Uh, it is characteristic, uh, well, of women's doubles to typically have uh, longer rallies, uh, win the game based on a bit on stamina as well, while you see a bit more flamboyance and um, uh, attacking mindset in the men's uh, category. Oh need not be that way all the time however you tend to see that and you t you tend to see the same trend in the air badminton women's doubles as well ready play That was over. Nine, eight. Out. Ten. Game point. Hey. <laughs> over. Nine, ten. All right. Um, well, look at that turnaround. Bulgaria is in a position yeah, to actually summer. win the fourth game and uh, bring it back to the equal. Play. Yeah, thank you. Ten all. Ten all. Uh, now it's a difference of two, which comes into effect, unless except, of course, if both the teams reach twelve points each, then whoever scores a thirteenth point wins the game.
11, match point, 10. That small error costed that crucial point for Bulgaria. And uh, now France is on the verge of winning this match. Game. All right, well, eventually it's French who are victorious in this match. But kudos to the positive spirit that was around in this match. Uh, all the six players had fantastic time out there, gave their best, and uh, a really nice match to witness for the audience. I hope all of you had a good, good time. We will now take a small 11, break 7, before the next 11, match 8, starts. You can, of course, 10, 12, follow the schedule 12, of all 10. the matches on the BWF tournament software website. Uh, yes. to know the agenda and see how if you are able to tune into the rest of the matches as well. We do understand it could be a bit late in the day for all the viewers joining in from Asia, uh, especially, uh, but do thank all of you for your presence online. We'll be back momentarily. And the next game we're going to watch on a court number one is the men's triple, the Netherlands versus Azerbaijan. Since 1996, my dear friend, we have been exploring those who are not afraid of creation. Excitement, challenges, and magical moments that arouse our endless curiosity. It is in the Dutch blood. Summer. 
based on where I am because I got my drugs from Amsterdam. Ready to play? Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tahit Al Hassanov, Azmi Kuberimi Radoni. Muhammad Gaddafi Amri, Amiri, Azerbaijan. And on my left, Gijs Duis, Russell Muntz, Wessel van der A, the Netherlands. Wessel van der A to serve, love all, play. One love. Serve is over. One all. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, back to AWBG European Qualifiers 2023. Uh, we are witnessing uh, Netherlands versus Azerbaijan uh, on court number one in Werkendam. However, while you enjoy this match, we have a special guest on uh, com in the commentary box. His name is Frey Cox, and he has been a long time um, umpire and uh, 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 even a team lead for, for umpires. Freik, welcome on the commentary. Thank you. Freik Cox Allo, by the way, since my marriage. I have a double uh -huh. last name now. All so right. Cox Allo. Th thanks for correcting me. Th yeah. Freik Cox Allo. Yes. Excellent. Indeed. Excellent. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your wedding. When did it happen, by the way? Uh, last August. Ah. 19th of August. Fantastic. So still a newlywed uh, wallet. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Where do you live, uh, Freik? I live in Utrecht. So <laughs> uh, half an hour drive from here. That's not too bad at all. No. Right? No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, does badminton make you travel a lot? for different tournaments? Yes, it does. I mean, uh, for the Netherlands, you get all over the country for yep. uh, Eerste Divisie, Eredivisie, uh, Master Tournaments, and also uh, events like this. And then for Badminton Europe, all over Europe, and for the BWF through the rest of the world. So, right. Yeah. Well, what is the latest international trip that you do, did? Uh, I, in April, I was in Brazil for the Brazil Para International in Sao Paulo. Wow, okay. How yeah. was the experience in Brazil? Uh, it was a very interesting experience because the, the cycle for qualification of the Paralympics in Paris has just started. Mm -hmm. So it was the biggest uh, in uh, contestants numbers wise uh, tournament I've ever seen in okay. uh, para badminton. 
So that was very interesting, but it was uh, hard work. Every morning, transport at 7 a.m., and you got back to the hotel around 9 or 10 p.m. So uh, wow, that's a long it day. wasn't a holiday. It was uh, <laughs> hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I hope you got to enjoy some nice Brazilian food. <laughs> Oh yes, we got to enjoy some nice Brazilian food, and on a Saturday we even got to enjoy in the evening a football match in, a st <laughs> in one of the famous stadiums in Brazil. There you go. With, and the wife was with me, so uh, we had a great time there. Excellent, excellent. All right, Frank, you have been with badminton for such a long time, and we have known each other for maybe like two years. Yes. I think I met you when uh, I was in the commentary box for national championships in 2021, and it was fantastic meeting you back then. Tell Thank us a bit about your career and your involvement in badminton. Yeah, my involvement in badminton started in 1990, so I hope the kids don't switch off now and think, oh my God, <laughs> grandpa's talking. <laughs> uh, but I, I joined the badminton club Roermond in uh, 1990 as a player. I figured out very quickly that uh, playing was not my biggest talent, let's put it that way. So, uh, but just before I was about to quit, uh, the chairman asked me because he noticed that I was big, I have some natural authority and I knew all the laws of badminton and they were looking for an umpire. He asked me if I could uh, join their, his club as an official. And I decided since I still had five more years at university to go in 92 that uh, I could help the club out for five years mm -hmm. and then I would move on. Well, but. Uh, as you can imagine, that was 1997 when those five years are over. We are in 2023 and I'm still around. <laughs> so I don't know what went wrong, but uh, I'm still enjoying myself beside the court. So did you continue, uh, well, did you try umpiring first time in the club in Ruhrmond? Back yes. Then? Okay. Yes. What is the name of the club? Well, it was Badminton Club Ruhrmond. Sadly, okay. uh, they ceased to exist last year or two years ago oh. due to uh, lack of membership. Mm -hmm. I was even at their final tournament. Okay. So uh, it's a bit uh, bittersweet that the club where I started doesn't exist anymore, but they uh, live on in my heart, <laughs> that I'm I can sure. tell you. I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, Frank, tell us a bit more about what, have, what you have been involved lately in. Well, I'm, uh, I have multiple roles. Uh, I'm the chairman of the development committee for technical officials in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So I also occupy myself with the team, uh, with uh, trying to grow the numbers and also grow the level of the umpires in the Netherlands. Then I'm, of course, a, a badminton umpire in the regular uh, indoor uh, badminton uh, up to the BWF level. I'm an umpire in para badminton, so the, the badminton for, I don't like using the word handicapped. Mm -hmm. I prefer the word that they use in the Emirates, which is people of determination. Mm -hmm. Also up to the BWF level, and uh, since uh, the BWF Urban Series Air Badminton uh, last year in Utrecht, mm -hmm. I'm also a uh, part of uh, this circuit, uh, <laughs> which has landed now in Workendam. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Frank, uh, being an umpire is a, a, a job of high responsibility. Uh, players are looking at you for direction, sometimes even leadership. Yes. Right? Uh, tell us a funny incident that has happened in your umpiring journey where you had to really make your authority known and uh, maybe you don't have to take the names of players if you're not comfortable with that but tell us something that umpires experience in their job yeah um, indeed we do not mention names because we don't want to uh, uh, impose players or anything but I was at a tournament somewhere in Western Europe let's mm -hmm. put it that way mm -hmm. and uh, one of the players, it was game point in a mixed doubles mm -hmm. in a final. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the players rushed in at game point. They were ahead in the score and they were receiving. Mm -hmm. But it was no fault receiver. Mm -hmm. So I didn't call it. He smashed off the serve, mm -hmm. winning the point and therefore winning the game. Mm -hmm. But the opponents were went berserk because they were... 100% sure uh, that the player had made a fault, a receiver fault, and he should have called it. Mm -hmm. And when you do that at 21 20, yeah. it's very crucial. Right. There wasn't a big gap or anything. Anyway, play continued. The team that had won the first game also won the second game, and therefore the tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the match, usually we all stay more or less in the same hotel at an international tournament. I was sitting in the uh, hotel bar having a soda, thinking about the tournament, and then the coach of the losers of my final came to me 
and he said, you are incredible, and I thought he was going to go very angry, etc. Uh, he said, I've watched the replay of that game point in the first game 20 times, and no matter how far I watch it, it's not a fault receiver. So I told my players they were wrong. He said, but I cannot believe you saw it from the chair, because even for me, I was 100% sure it was a fault receiver until I watched that replay over and over and over again. <laughs> He was fast, but he didn't move his feet. And that's a misconception that a lot of players have. Mm -hmm. When a player is moving with the upper part of his body, right. they think it's fault receiver. Mm -hmm. But the law only states one part of both of your feet needs to be in still in contact with the floor. Mm -hmm. the, what the rest of the body does doesn't matter. So it's only a fault receiver if the feet move, and they didn't move. So okay. that was a funny, uh, wow, funny well, experience. Wow, uh, kudos to you for noticing that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, indeed a very funny moment. Uh, Frank, uh, let's turn a bit towards air badminton. Sure. Um, uh, you have, of course, uh, umpired and did uh, refereeing for so many international high-profile events. Uh, what is uh, What are some of the unique changes that you have to embrace as an umpire? and be careful about when you do you are, you are one of the officials in air badminton match? Well, there are several challenges, to be quite honest. For example, here you have an event called triplets, mm -hmm. where you have three players on each side, mm -hmm. and sometimes mixed, so also a different uh, gender. And there you have to be very careful that you know who is serving, uh, because there's a certain sequence. And also, one player cannot hit a stroke two times consecutively. This is very hard because we're not used to that. Right. In uh, regular badminton, you only have doubles and you, the same player can hit it as many times as he wants. Mm -hmm. Here that's not allowed, so mm -hmm. you have to be very keen on that. That's why we, we don't have just a service judge here. The guy on the other or lady on the other side of the net is called an assistant umpire. Mm -hmm because they are also allowed to call faults, like the twice consecutive uh, hit stroke. Mm -hmm. That's a fault that also the assistant can call. Uh, the assistant can also uh, call, there's a dead zone here. So if you see the front, the front area at the net, mm -hmm. uh, the players are only allowed to enter that when they're following through a stroke right. with a dive or a quick step, and then they need to get out. You mean the dead zone? In the dead zone, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not. They cannot just. What happened to me a couple of uh, matches earlier? Somebody made a stroke, stopped, and then made a step into the dead zone. So I immediately called fault mm -hmm. because that's deliberately going into the dead zone at a moment when it's not allowed. Right. That's a challenge. Another challenge is the the light. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, luckily our sponsor Sinner gives us very nice eyewear okay. uh, to block uh, sunlight. Mm -hmm. But with a different color shuttle and a completely different speed and also the wind that can interject and stuff, it's much harder to keep track of the shuttle here yeah. than in an ideal environment indoors with a bright white shuttle, etc. Right. So there are quite a few challenges uh, for an umpire here. Yeah, I did uh, notice that you are keenly observing how the service is being done. Yes. Uh, how, what are the things that you're looking at as an umpire when a service is being done in air badminton match? Uh, in air badminton, uh, there's uh, more allowed, I have to say, with a service than in a regular badminton. Uh, but they have to stay below 1 meter 45, mm -hmm. which is the height of the net. Right. So they can serve much higher. Oh, okay. But it still means they have to serve upwards. Right. Because uh, if right. you're serving downwards and it goes over the net, you serve too high. Yeah. They still need to make uh, one fluent motion forward. Mm -hmm. uh, they still need to hit the base of the shuttle first and they still need to keep their feet on the ground while serving. So those are the things you uh, keep an eye on. Okay, but it, it does feel like you have a lot to manage in, in air badminton match compared to a regular badminton match, or is that not the case? Uh, it's still pretty much the same workload. It's the, I would say it's the same workload, except we are with fewer umpires here, unfortunately, so mm -hmm. we have to work a bit harder than in normal tournaments. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the surroundings, like standing in the sun, yeah. eight hours, 10 hours a day to umpire badminton. That makes it a Very difficult. challenger. Yeah, but I, uh, I like a challenge and I never walk away from a challenge. So uh, it's a good challenge. How many liters of water did you drink throughout the day? 
uh, I would say between three and a half and four. Well, you need a little more. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, that's a lot of hard work. And uh, uh, kudos to you for being so passionate about badminton, regardless of which format are you doing the umpiring on. Might be para badminton, air badminton, regular badminton, right? Uh, it, it does. Um, I can I can be sure that it involves a lot of education on your part as well, a lot of reading yep. and keeping up to date with what's happening in the badminton world. Um, What's the next tournament, uh, Freik, after this one for you? After this one, it will be the Korean Open in uh, Jeju Island in the south of Korea in July. Okay, okay, all right. Do you have any vacation plans for summer? No, because uh, uh, this is one of the sacrifices as a BWF umpire in both para and uh, able body badminton. All my holidays will be badminton tournaments. So I have uh, Korean Open then the European Para Games, and then the World Championships in Denmark, and then all my holidays for 2023 will be used. <laughs> so, uh, okay. unfortunately, no time for a regular holiday for me this year. Being a newly married man, does your wife complain about your high-intensity schedule? Um, not really, because uh, we also met through badminton. Okay. After a BWF invite for me in Africa. Right. So uh, she does respect my hobby because she, she got to know me through the hobby. Mm -hmm. And I try, as I said, I took her to Brazil. We've been to Uganda together to a tournament, to Barcelona together to a tournament. I try to combine things as much as I can and also dedicate the time that I'm not umpiring uh, to her as much as possible. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Freik, I'm going to let you carry on because I know you're a very busy man today, especially because you're working with less number of people. But I wish you the very best. It is a pleasure talking to you all the time and meeting every you every single time. So all the very best. Likewise, and thanks for promoting us on air. I hope more people listen to this and also want to become an umpire because we're still short of umpires in the <laughs> Netherlands. We'll try to send a message out for a few times. Today Thank and you tomorrow. very much. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed interview of Freik Cox. Hello, um, and uh, it was. I hope you found it insightful to know a bit more about an umpire's life in general. Uh, well, stay tuned on. Enjoy the match between Netherlands and Azerbaijan. Uh, it's going quite neck to neck with nine points to Netherlands, eight points for. Oh, uh, the first set being won by Netherlands and Azerbaijan leading in the second one. So uh, it's going quite neck to neck. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you.
Turn it over. One all. This one. Two, one. Three, one. Serve is over. Two, three. Serve is over. Four, two. Okay. Serve is over. Three, four. Serve is over. Five, three. Serve is over. Four, five. Out five all Out, serve is over, six, five. Fault. Double. Seven, five. Serve is over. Six, seven. Serve is over, eight, six. Okay. Out, 
curve is over. Seven, eight. Eight, oh. Nine, eight. Ten game point eight. Serve is over. Nine ten. Game. Third game won by Azerbaijan. Na Eleven nine. Azerbaijan leads two games to one. Yes, two games played. So I can announce that the next game on court number one is a man for the Swiss. Switzerland uh, versus uh, Bulgaria. They can go to the meeting point and uh, get ready for the next game on court one. I repeat, Switzerland versus Bulgaria. Fourth game, love all, play. One, love. All right, well, we are back in the competitor's box to cover the match between Azerbaijan and Netherlands, the host country. Uh, Azerbaijan is playing really well. They are leading by two games to one against Netherlands. Some unfortunate errors creeping in Dutch game. However, uh, Azerbaijan, to their credit, have been able to make a comeback after losing the first game. Out. One, two. One, two. Uh, a pretty close game.
Excellent defense by Azerbaijan team, uh, really keeping the rally on and eventually waiting for the right time to induce an error in uh, Dutch attack, thereby winning the point. Thank you. Three, one. Serve is over to four. Azerbaijan team represented by four men Jahid uh, Alha Sanov, Muhammad Qaddafi, Amri Agil Gabilov, and Azmi Kobe Mura Madoni. My sincere excuses if I mispronounce any of the names. Azerbaijan has been really going on attacking uh, over the last couple of games now and that uh, strategy of attacking Dutch players has been working out quite well. Um, hopefully the host country Netherlands is able to make a comeback. Excellent judgment by Azerbaijan again, taking the points of six to three. Uh, that's a pretty healthy lead. What Azerbaijan has been able to do really well is uh, uh, get Dutch players on a on a defensive mode without taking too many risks, and that has that strategy has yielded some returns. The Dutch team is represented by Russell Munz, Russell van der Aar, Russell van der Aar and uh, Heistes. As it stands in the pool right now, uh, Denmark has won three out of three games that they played, uh, which takes their tally to uh, uh, nine games won and two games lost. Uh, but purely on the on the points, they are ahead in the pool. Netherlands is actually the second, and they have won both the games that they have played yeah. so far. Azerbaijan ha sta is standing at the third uh, position, where they did end up losing the game against um, against Denmark. Czech Republic and Belgium have played three, but have won none, which makes them fourth and fifth respectively. There seems to be some issue with
with Heise's foot. Uh, we did see a medic attending to it, uh, and the assessment is still ongoing. We're not exactly sure what went wrong over there. But uh, hey, uh, kudos to Azerbaijan team uh, who have not only won the last two games uh, after losing the first game, but they are actually uh, looking quite favorable to win the match now, which is uh, amazing. Uh, well done to the boys from Azerbaijan. I see we do have a lot of support for Azerbaijan. Uh, a lot of viewers tuning in from uh, from the country. Uh, thanks for joining in, guys. Please do continue supporting your country and thereby the sport of air badminton. Now the umpires uh, kind of visiting Hayes, uh or perhaps just to you know take a break from standing up there. <laughs> um, it, it's a tiring, it's tiring job for umpires. Let's be honest about it. Uh, they have been uh, working, as Freak mentioned some time back, they have been working with uh, uh, only a few umpires throughout the event, and they have to rotate themselves to uh, ensure that everyone gets a well-deserved short break every once in a while. Uh, standing up there and watching over the net and making quick decisions about how the play is being conducted is not easy, especially when you add it on with high temperatures as we have witnessed today so well done to all the umpires for all the hard work and being attentive throughout the event it has been uh, it has been quite a successful fun for them Well, Christus, the third Dutch player, is back on the field, which is a promising sign. Uh, uh, indicates nothing was serious. Probably he was just taking um, should be uh, probably he was just taking a precaution, uh, ensuring that nothing is wrong with uh, uh, his his feet or fingers, perhaps. However, all looks good. We are all set to resume again. Uh, let's see how the next few minutes go. And if Azerbaijan is able to pull this off, which would be amazing. Excellent diving, uh, rather kill by Vessel van der Aar. Good commitment. Excellent athleticism, and uh, the rule says that you are allowed to step in the dead zone if that's a follow-up of an ongoing shot, which is what he did over there. However, if you are yet to hit the shot or if there is no intention for you to, for ne no reason for you to step in the dead zone, then that could be counted as a fault by the umpire. Just one of the nuances in the rules of air badminton. Excellent deceptive drop by Vessel again. Uh, Dutch team is kind of making a mini comeback over here. Uh, it's a do, I, a do or die game for them. That was probably the longest rally of the match. Uh, I wonder if anybody counted the number of shots that went into that rally, but it was well fought out between Azerbaijan and Netherlands. Uh, Netherlands has taken a slender lead of two points.
excellent anticipation and eventual kill by Vessel. Vessel has been making a difference over here. Uh, he's been extremely proactive in the front of the court, uh, trying to be attentive and take his chances of killing it as soon as possible, not giving any chance for uh, players from Azerbaijan to react. Good game all around. Over. Beautiful net kill by Azerbaijan. Uh, they're still fighting it hard and uh, they want to make sure that they are giving their best in winning this game and the match. Excellent smash, cross court, uh, right at the body of the player from Azerbaijan. Uh, that takes Netherlands to uh, game point for the fourth game. Over. Excellent again, uh, excellent body smash. Body smash seems to be the secret of winning points here, uh, at least for uh, last couple of points. Um, but uh, good, good smash right at Russell, uh, giving or uh, reducing the deficit of Dutch lead. And that, it, that removes one more point of the table. So that's 9 10. Azerbaijan is really. Uh, keeping an aggressive mindset and that is that that that, that mindset is yielding them some good returns oh. oh wow that was a close one wasn't it somehow somehow dutch boys have pulled it off and uh, that makes a score 2-2 uh, between the two teams this is a uh, Closely contested match between Azerbaijan and Netherlands. Um, there is a bit of crowd support for the host country, of course, over here. But kudos to Azerbaijan for putting up a great fight so far. Uh, I personally cannot wait for the fifth game to start. It sure seems like a, a sizzling match so far. I'd like to thank all the viewers on the line uh, for their kind words. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you are enjoying this live stream as well as the commentary that goes along with it. The players are taking a well-deserved rest. That was a pretty long game, uh, which also uh, contained a bit of an injury concern from uh, one of the Dutch players' point of view. Uh, all was well at end of it, so uh, the game could go on, and Dutch somehow finally pulled it off in their favor. Uh, coach Robert de Keyser, he is uh, uh, his, he has a lot of tips for his boys and uh, looks like they are all set to resume the ultimate game, the fifth game to determine outcome of this match. Final game. Novel play. <laughs> 